Because we like bitches. Coming soon to this theater. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And the thing goes scratch. I do like this music. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us for the Horror Movie Club, the club where, what do we do? We watch horror movies, of course. Uh, we always make sure that it's a movie that's not behind a paywall. So the link is always down in the description where you can click on the link, and it will take you to a uncut, unedited, uncensored version of the movie that we're discussing. And tonight's movie is, uh, it's a classic. Uh, last week we did uh, Peeping Tom, and this action, which is itself a classic from 1960, uh, Michael Powell's Peeping, Peeping Tom, the movie that's infamous for destroying the career of its director. Uh, this is really would would actually make a really good uh, double feature with uh, with Peeping Tom. They definitely deal with uh, similar themes, I would say. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, sex and obsession and murder and uh uh quite possibly mental illness although we don't know in this it's a little uh it's a little uh ambiguous but uh uh actually uh martin was george romero's favorite film uh, uh from his own personal uh huh. filmography most people would you know say night of the living dead dawn of the dead something like that as his best film he felt it, he felt it was martin but anyway, uh, enough of my yakking right now. Let me bring on my esteemed co-hosts. Uh, first of all, first of all, of course, my boy, your boy, Matt Burke. What is up, son, up, son, son, son? How you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not great. Not shitty. Just all right. All right. Yeah. Me and too, man. Said, I'm I'm doing great. <laughs> right. Oh, but, but you know, but better now that I'm, now, I'm, now that I'm talking to you. And uh, Dave, aka ID Crisis, what's up, brother? Good. How are you? Hanging in there, man. Hanging yeah, in there. Yeah, me too. Kind of catching up. I'm I'm, uh, I'm multitasking, but I, I got a chance to see this movie, so I, I wanted to I wanted to get in. And I haven't been with you guys in a while, and I, I'm what, what's the line? I miss your ugly mugs. We, we miss you. We, we missed you too, man. We missed right. you too. It's good, <laughs> good to see you, brother. And pops, what's up, pops? How are you doing, brother? Surviving. <laughs> just a lot of that these days it seems a lot of people just kind of hanging by their nails going ah! mm -hmm. no. but that's okay i'm already that's okay. dropping toward the splat dude i'm already dropping toward uh, the splat. yeah times like this when shit when shit when shit's rough you just gotta remind yourself shit's temporary you know it's not gonna it's not gonna last forever your tears won't fall now the older forever. you get the more the chance that it will yeah, no, that's true. That's okay. true. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, like... yeah. <laughs> well, when I hit 50, when I hit 50, it did occur to me, it's like, oh, I'm at that age now where sometimes, not often, but sometimes motherfuckers just drop dead. Yeah. And it's happened to friends of mine who were like, you know, I had a friend who was like 60 and just like, and mm -hmm. it's just like, fuck. And, you know, it's it, it's not common but it happens, and you just become aware of the fact it's that more yeah, common you than might you think. like that. It's, it's more common than you think because every one of us knows somebody it's happened to. Yes, no, that's true. That's true. Okay, yeah. you know, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. don't know everybody else's experience. Everybody knows somebody who dropped dead in opportunity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this. I mean, this, I mean, you know, this guy's a homeboy of mine from like from the depression uh, bipolar support uh, group that I was part of. And he was just a fucking awesome aces guy. Helped me so much. 
uh, taught me so much. And uh, I mean, he was overweight and he smoked cigars and shit like that. But yeah, like his wife just woke up and found him lying dead next to her. Like, yeah, oh, wow. 60 years old, man. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Horrible. Did you say wife. next door or next to her? Next to her. I was going to say, it sounds like. <laughs> it's like that. It's like that. Uh, <laughs> It's like that. Uh, uh, um, what's that song? It's like uh, 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 "Cool in the Gang." If you, if you, if like, if the Lord should take you before I wake. Yeah, yeah. He's like right. singing about like his right. wife like dying in bed. Yeah. Like that's so him. I know the one. Um, yeah. Like oh shit, man. You know oh god, it doesn't it doesn't get any more real. Cherish isn't that cherish? Cherish the yeah, Lord. Yeah, right. It was like I had to I had to get back and. Replay it in my head. Yeah, I was running through that, been, that in my '80s Rolodex. The entire night. <laughs> yeah, but, but what's going through my head? Like Rolodex, I was like, "She's fresh. She's so fresh, exciting." Like, no, no, not that. No, one. that's not it. It's not brick house, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, there's nobody waking, like, like, like worrying about like their girlfriend or their wife or whoever waking up, like dying in bed next to them while they're sleeping. And fresh, <laughs> she's so fresh. Oh Christ. Anyway, uh, yeah, real quick, wanted to talk about uh, the uh, the weekend, Jeez. the week, the weekend hard. Did you guys? <laughs> she's, so, she's so fresh for now. For now, but then the decomposition she's will start. She's she won't ripe. Be she's so, so fresh. ripe. She's so ripe. She's so ripe. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! <laughs> that would, and now, God, now I'm like thinking, like, damn, that would make a good horror car song. <laughs> That's what I love about being on this stream. Nobody can palm the wheel like you can, Brian. I mean, oh, I can Christ. take some tangents and stuff, but oh Christ, this is my way. tangents. It's sinister, man. That's my that, that's that's the ADD working right there. Is what that <laughs> is. Fucking hell! It's cool when you can weaponize it because I can weaponize that shit. When when, right. I'm, when I'm like super ADD, I'm like, okay, I know what I'm doing today. I'm doing housework. <laughs> zoop zoop. <laughs> like like I'm vacuuming. I'm you know, uh, washing the windows and shit like that. And, you know, you can weaponize that shit sometimes. Oh, for sure. Oh, my God. Anyway, <laughs> finally got to see uh, Evil Dead Rise. Have you oh, guys not... seen that yet? No, I no, haven't. Oh, man. Unfortunately. Uh, I saw the trailer for it. It is on uh, streaming now. Like, remember, I think last week I was talking about... Uh, uh, what's your thought? Uh, um, Renfield, right? Yeah, Renfield, and, yeah. Right, which which I really enjoyed, which I thought was – and you remember, uh, uh, Matt, like you were way more optimistic about that movie than I was. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just had a feeling because like a lot, a lot of movies like that usually they don't really, I don't know, turn out that great. You know what I mean? You can kind of tell. You know what I mean? I think this one, that one though, had a little little something because of Cage in it, you know? I, I knew he would he would be like the – the balancing chip, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was right. But it's just like, if the whole movie is shit, you know, he's not, you know, him as Dracula is not going to be able to save it, or it's going to be like a shit movie. And then you're just going to be happy when he's on screen as Dracula. And it was actually fun. I yeah. actually thought it was, I actually thought it was like, Hey, like that was yeah. all right. Yeah. Evil, Evil Dead saying. Rise went from me seeing the trailer for it in front of Nefarious a couple of weeks ago to streaming already. Yes. Yes. Huh. That is because here's the thing: people are not going to the movie theaters like they used to. Mm -hmm. Movie theaters have never recovered from the cuff. Yeah, and well, so yeah, and, that, and that's why they have their like classic nights and stuff. They'll play stuff that you saw in the theater from like Raiders of the Lost Ark and and, and well, the like. they they haven't been doing they haven't the, the big movie theater chains at least around here haven't been doing that. I've always thought like you dumb motherfuckers. Yeah. You put Raiders of the Lost Ark, you put Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. you put Back to the Future, you put like That's what they're doing around here. Good. Yeah, around here yeah. too. Wow. It took well, how many years did it take for them to fucking figure that out? Yeah. Right? Long yeah. Time. They're always slow when it comes to this shit, man. Uh they're always like, you know, where were you when they Here's, needed you, Bri? Bri? Well, I mean, look, I mean, it's just—it's not a case of me being some kind of fucking visionary. It's a case of them just being dumbasses. This movie's making right. pretty good money, though. Like, it's not globally. how smart yeah, you yeah. are. It's yeah, almost it's, at one hundred, yeah, one hundred twenty million. Almost is that one hundred eighteen million for for for? I mean, a horror movie for now, like post, you know. Yes. Yeah. It. it yeah. It, it. It. It is a. It is a massive hit, mm -hmm. and so that means there's gonna be more. 
Definitely Evil more, Dead yeah. Yeah. on the way. And so now they're doing what they should have been doing uh, all along, which is with the indie movies. They, we've talked about this many times. Uh, with the indie movies for like a, well over a decade now, what they do is they release like uh, to streaming and movie theaters the same day because they're indie movies, and so they're not going to be playing everywhere. They're only going to be playing in like major cities, yeah. park house theaters, and college right. towns, that kind of a thing. So if you're just like in the suburbs and you want to go to the multiplex and check check out like that movie it's not going to be playing there because like the marvel movies are going to be on every screen but right. then you can download that shit or stream it and like that very same day you don't you don't have to wait for it cool now what they're doing in hollywood is they're releasing the movies theatrically and they're waiting like 3 4 week however many weeks that's what i'm saying dude while the movies are still in the theater just and then you weeks. have right and you're good you know yeah which is fucking brilliant that's because, a long time you think about it like if you really want to see a fucking movie like four weeks is a, a month is a, you know is a good time i think and after that you're like all right you know i can uh because most people want to see it in the first week or the second week you know after that it's kind of fizzles out right for, for yeah. something you really really want to watch right right and because so much about movies, and it didn't used to be this way, you would never turn on the TV and hear, like, you would never turn on the TV and hear them talk about the box office. Right. They would only talk about whether a movie was good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like and, everyone has to know if it's making money or not. Right. Because it's like if the movie's uh, opening big, then people want to go see it. Yeah. But I guess because they're idiots and they think, well, well, if, if it's making that much money, it must be good. Like, yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, idiots, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, what's up, Shadow? oh, hey, what up, Shadow? Everybody hanging out in the chat, thank you so much for hanging out. We really do appreciate you. Uh, but yeah, so I got a chance to see this, uh, yeah. with my with, with my boy, uh, uh, Chris, if you're listening, brother, much love to you. And, uh, I don't think. I liked it as much as I thought I would. Mm. I didn't like it as much as a lot because I, the reviews that I heard were euphoric. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah, I, don't really I, heard. That. I haven't heard I never, one bad I review. Got to ask her what she thought. Well, the reviews I heard range were like were, the first reviews were euphoric and talking about how this movie puts you through like an emotional ringer. And I'm a sucker for that, right? Oh, if uh, it's good. Yeah, I mean, good writing will do that all the time. Right, and I love when horror movies go for your heart and your gut and just fucking twist. Mm, and yeah. especially when you're talking about family. Yeah, and yeah. really, no genre deals better with family issues than horror. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, that's something about my family. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I was, uh, so I was going in with like, pretty high expectations also yeah <laughs> the worst reviews that i heard were were that it was mid and i thought mm. okay if the worst reviews are saying it's mid that means it's probably going to be pretty pretty damn good people and, say that shit all the time now mid <laughs> like they're yeah they do like that word oh my god like mid and meta like fuck everyone just throws those words around all the time now right well, because people always look at look fun. I I use it like because so people computerized, right? Well, yeah, because you know, I, I, people look at me funny when I say that something's I. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's I. Yeah. You're like, huh? What? It's mid. Oh, yeah. okay. I understand you now. First time I heard somebody refer to a, a, like a cool piece of art or music as uh, retarded. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. You know what I mean? You like, are, and it was you like, are what here for the time being. Well, what I mean is, I don't want to mess with your. I mean, I know Neil is listening, Neil or Susan or whoever it is is listening. I don't want to mess you mess you up, but you know, it's just like the first time you get into some little you know piece of culture and somebody we're like remember when it used to, like that's bad, right? Like in the eighties, you know, that's bad. Oh, yeah. It's so bad. bad, like the bad outfit. Like, I I'm a bad oh, cool. man. Yeah, right. Same yeah. thing. Same yeah. thing. Right. And yeah, I mean, you know, uh, lingo and shit, shit, shit that shit like that changes. Uh, I try to, I try to keep up with the youngins. You know, re <laughs> remain relevant in some way. <laughs> well, I just try not to be clueless. You know. You, you know, there's there's only one group of people that was offended by that. By what? 
retarded? By, by what he said. <laughs> well, there's yeah. nothing wrong with the word retarded. Retarded means backwards. I know. The only people that are offended it's by just, it. Like you're slow. Like I have a paint retarder. It makes it yes. dry slow. people that are offended yes. by it are people that are called that that aren't that. I have to find this on YouTube yes. and put it in the private chat. If you guys get a chance to listen to this, this Dana Gold, I know it's wrong. The entire album is amazing. Oh, man. But, uh, keep keep going, Brian. Yeah, so, uh, I, look, I like this. I thought it was really good. It uh, definitely does have a emotional component to it because – what you're doing is you're watching the uh, the death of a uh, of an American family. You're watching an American family being just uh, completely uh, destroyed, and <laughs> and of, and of course, you know, I mean, it's an Evil Dead movie, so when people get 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 got, you know, they're coming back, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know it's going to be nasty. And then, of course, that's. You know, one of the horrible things that's always been the horrible things about any kind of undead, about vampires, about zombies, is what happens when it's like your your loved one that's 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 come yeah. back and coming at you, and you're gonna have a problem putting a fucking axe in their head, mm -hmm. even though you know it's not them, and that it's right. just a meat puppet at the at the at this point, and uh, the way the film deals with that is actually uh, a, a pretty uh, poignant. Uh, at, at at moments. At the same time, there's a lot of member berries, right? Like, oh, rem you know, remember that? Remember this? Like, for instance, remember the eyeball that pops out of a uh, <laughs> dead eye skull and goes flying into that woman's mouth? In, yeah. Oh. <laughs> in, yeah, yeah. In uh, Evil Dead 2, yeah. there's, a, there's a reference that, that happens. It does for the most part. See, I don't mind that sort of a thing when it kind of is the like, right way to do homage right 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 and like for instance the evil dead movie you're gonna get the 12 gauge you're gonna get the chainsaw yeah no mm -hmm. matter what right? right the boomstick right. and the fucking yeah yeah and and that's actually part of the fun is like okay like what like how how is a chainsaw gonna come into this where are they gonna get the chainsaw? yeah it's, 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 get yeah, the it's not are you going to get it it's how are they going to exactly. incorporate it yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah 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 and that's and that's part of the fun and that's also one of the things that you have to understand is that it's an Evil Dead movie. It's supposed to be fun. Uh, I actually really like the 2013 film because it yeah. was so vicious. Yeah, it was. And uncompromising. And the gore was brutal. Uh, there's brutal, brutal gore in this. Uh, but this has a little bit more of a sense of humor, a nasty sense of humor. Right? Like when mom has been uh, turned into a deadite. And she's going after one of the kids and she grabs a cheese grater. You know, something nasty is going to, you're like, oh, not the cheese grater. Like, that's right, gonna right. Hurt, and that part right? was in the trailer. Yeah. 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 I seen and Boss so, Logic made a big cheese grater, like, as a, as a skyscraper in the background for, like, a, you know, a mock up. He does, like, a lot of the movie um, fan art, you know. Oh, who is this? Boss. You've heard of Boss Logic, right? No. No. He's, a, he's like this artist that's been doing, like, fan art. Like, he's a, he's a graphic designer, but he's pretty popular. He's, on, on Twitter, he's been around for like ever, dude. Like he would always do like the fan casts, like re like oh, of different actors. You know what I mean? Like like say like you know it's Harry Potter or somebody oh, yeah, is like yeah, Wolverine yeah, yeah. or something. You know like. But he was right. doing it. He's been doing it for like ten years, I think. But I, I, th I think I now th he's working for the movies for sure. You know, in the industry. That's awesome. I mean, you you know me. Like one of the things I always do is I always look up the fan posters tonight. We're gonna look at some really cool ones for Martin. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure he's done a, some that you've seen for other stuff, you know. Pro yeah, prob pro probably. He's like one of those dudes I don't like. I don't know, but I know. Uh, I know about. Uh, yeah. Let, let's take a quick look at the at the trailer for this. It, of course, you know I got to stop it every now and then. Once again, it drives me crazy. It's just what like it's it? a commercial. Seconds. It's sixty seconds or something. Something like that. I don't know, but let's take a take a quick look at it. No matter how busy you ever got, you always found time for me. Yeah, that's never a good sign. I can't believe I'm never gonna speak to you again. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so the plot to this is kind of cool because you've got a woman that hasn't seen her sister and her uh, her kids like for a while because she's like a roadie, although she says like, no, I'm actually a guitar technician. That's like different. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's different than a roadie. But she's yeah. just been leading sort of like a vagabond life, which is cool. I mean, she's a young girl, chick, you know, fuck it, right? The sort of thing you should be doing when you're young. But now she's just discovered that she's pregnant. Mm. And so she goes uh, to uh, to her sister, uh, who's now estranged from her husband and, you know, is connecting with her nieces and nephew. And Trying to get a feel for what's in store. Right. Because yeah. you've you got to establish the, fa the family uh, before they get ripped to pieces, like, you know, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah, I and, hate when that doesn't happen. Yeah, man. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, "What is?" This? Oh yeah, it's one of the things I gotta say too. The uh, the way that the um, deadites get into this place is is done in a really interesting way. Instead of the tape recorder, we've got these old records that are from like the 1920s. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, also, the design for the Book of the Dead in this is really uh, is really neat. It's if they're not really playing them at seventy six speed, then no. Well, it turns out that the and sun. I have an issue with the continuity person. Right. right. Yeah. Well, it turns out that the sun is a DJ, huh. and so that comes in handy because you know then he's you know put on the records, and then also being a DJ, he knows how to slow them down and speed them mm -hmm. up. Yeah, and uh, some of the gore in this man is is pretty, 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 pretty gnarly. Uh, the Book of the Dead itself. I think there's a nice shot of it here opening. What I love about it is like, yeah, naturally, it's 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 encased in like human flesh. <laughs> And evidently there are three of them. So this sort of kind of fits into the continuity. That is to say, I guess uh, the next film will be about like the third uh, one of these. And so this is canon then with the with the original movies? It's still part it's of the same. So, it's it sort of is, I think. Because this is the second book and the right. original franchise is the first Necronomicon in theory. Right. Oh, that's and, dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh one of the things that I love about the, about this version of the Necronomicon too, is uh, that it's it's bound in human flesh, but then it has like these these teeth. Mm, I see that it's got veins right? in it too. It looked like tree roots, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, of course, like when you're trying to open this thing, it's mm -hmm. going to be very difficult not to like uh, prick your finger. <laughs> yeah, and get possessed. And uh, spill some blood, which is then, mm. of course, going to uh, activate the fucking thing. And oh shit, I accidentally opened the vanilla ice video. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the kids do activate vanilla ice. Vanilla ice. <laughs> 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 uh, it's not the same. It's not the. It's not. The, it's got that little. The, the little little difference that that dun 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 dun. It's not the same. Fucking idiot. Go ninja, go ninja, go. <laughs> yeah. right. yeah, and this also, I have to say, does get right into the gore. Like, the intro is uh, brutal. And the, the gore in this is, like, generally, like, rough. This is, this mm. is definitely, uh, if, if, you're, if you're looking for, like, a splatter movie, this is definitely... Uh, you know, it, it, it delivers on the It feels a lot of kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing uh, that, I, that I have to say. Uh, the cast in this is really, really good. And yeah, I see this... they got the Viking queen to play the, the mother, right? Yep. Yeah, for Vikings. Yes. And uh, she's really terrific. Uh, the kids are really terrific. This little girl is terrific. Uh, you know, it's child actors are always, uh, wow. 
um, mm-hmm. hit and miss because child actors are very often like these little Shirley temples. That is to say, you catch them acting. And uh, this this kid just comes off as, as just a kid and uh, as uh, very authentic. I think sometimes that has to do with the kids, but also I think has to do with the directors and how they use them. And, uh, you think and- you could mob someday, honey bath? Oh, yeah? Yeah, you know how to lie to kids. <laughs> Yeah, and then we also get like a completely unnecessary reference to The Shining, which I thought was was uh, was a little lame. Mind mm. you, I'm just like point, pointing out all the things that I don't like. I don't mean to, you know, don't critics get are going to critic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, but uh, overall, is this worth seeing? Absolutely. I can't wait. Mom, mommy's with the maggots now. I have to say also the fact that this takes place in a apartment building and that and the fact also that the deadites in this have claws uh, oh, reminds shit. me a lot of Demons 2. Oh, okay. Right? No. Yeah, no. because Demons 2 takes place in a uh, apartment building, a mm. much swankier one than this. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that this is like a ripoff or anything like that. It doesn't turn into like Night of the Demons, but there is definitely like some inspiration from the. Uh, yeah, I could say Roberto the same Mama thing movies. about um, Wreck. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, oh yeah, especially uh, you're you're being locked in and locked down, and then wonder if if them uh, putting this movie together at the time that they started putting it together was subconsciously or otherwise using that lockdown mentality to their advantage yeah that's a, that's entirely uh that's entirely possible well i mean the thing is it's just like when you when you uh when you get the characters in an evil dead movie what's the first thing you have to do you have to isolate them put them in a cabin right and so in the cabin like, you're, like there's actually like a cool reference to the original evil dead in this where instead of like remember like they in uh the original evil dead it's the bridge yeah right like yeah like, right like they, they, they go across the bridge and the bridge has just been all fucked up yeah all mangled on both right? sides it's like, all mangled it's all curled broken fingers backwards kind of right right exactly it looks like it's been bent dude i was looking mm-hmm. for that picture online like google it's funny you brought that up because i have a scene in my new book that i wanted to like kind of reference that a little bit but i couldn't i couldn't nice. find anything like just like or just like certain like end of the road things like where there's like a, a cliff, yeah. you know, like in that, there's not too many of those. You mean like really a bridge out? It. Yeah, a bridge out. Yeah. But, um, well, they, like, well they did that also in Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah that, but that, well, I mean, they, they did that because it's always done. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, uh, and because the main movie that that's riffing on is Evil Dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Which so, I don't know about you guys, but I think Cabin in the Woods was, was, slice of genius and that's I, oh, I, a I, lot I, of people don't like it because i think they don't get it dude yeah. dude you know when that movie absolutely had me first of all i i, I enjoyed it from from beginning to end but yeah. the moment where that movie absolutely had me and i was like okay this is kind of dope is when you see all of the monsters in these little cubicles yeah right, right. that's right? the most rewindable part of, all, <laughs> of any movie i've ever seen <laughs> And there's right? a, I think there's a meta wiki or something like that where that goes through each one of the cubes yes. and goes, this is from this movie. And yes. but you can tell what they are. It's not a cube. Yeah, it's a sphere. Bites. That's the puzzle. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're typically right. your werewolf, your 13 ghost ghosts. But when they come out of the elevators all at once, you have to pause. You got to go, OK, yes. chopping mall, aliens, you yes. know, it's yes. yeah, yes. all these things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, look, look. And, the upside and, down and, face. The upside down face guy crawling on the ceiling was one of my favorites. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then of course you know like the Japanese ghost, right? Mm-hmm. From Ringu. And, yeah. Right. Right. I right. mean, every every area, every uh, culture has their own horror story. Of course, Afghanistan, it's total war and annihilation. Right. You know what is it in Spain? It's a a bull god something or whatever. Right. It's just like yeah, just the. The concept was awesome. It had me as soon as the as soon as the the logo came slamming onto the screen. Yeah, you know, like, yes. uh, are you even listening to what I'm saying? Boom, cabin in the woods. <laughs> right. All right. right. And then when you discover that this is happening all across 
the world that it's not just this one group or this one organization that's <laughs> mm-hmm. doing it. Yeah, look, I, I I love that movie. I I think it's brilliant, and I can't stand Joss Whedon. Uh, I don't. I yeah. mean, I, I think he's a talented filmmaker, but I'm not. I, I wish he his politics don't make. Him I give well, him that one. I give him Avengers. Both those movies are pretty solid. Oh, absolutely. Because you yeah. know what, what? Like with a with with both of those, he yeah. like rolled back the Whedoniness. Yeah, right? yeah. Like yeah. Avengers you look is at Avengers two. Movie, right. dude. You look at Avengers yeah. two. Full blown Whedon. Yeah. It's just yeah, yeah. I don't know. Too right? much. It's yeah. scale it back, bro. Scale it back. Marty. Don't always show us how clever one. you are. What's up, Frankie? Oh, uh, Marty with the you watch Marty with this morning. <laughs> I love that movie. That's a great one too. But uh yeah, so I'm telling me, man, I watched Martin Lawrence. Martin, Martin Lawrence Martin Martin. <laughs> Martin. Yeah, yeah well, well, I was looking for uh for like for clips. It was really tough because I, I, was, like, I was like, Martin scene. And it was cool a small, seeing, like, uh, Savini Martin. in there. I was like, oh, this fool is chilling in yeah, there. Man. <laughs> it's a boyfriend. Yeah, man. Yeah. And who all, you know, also did the, uh, also did the, uh, the, uh, the effects. <laughs> yeah, it's never a good sign. <laughs> Meanie. Meanie. You. Well, you know, it's a demon. I was like, oh shit, are she gonna bust out the racist version? <laughs> but uh but yeah, anyway, uh thumbs up on the uh on the new Evil Dead movie. Uh go go check it out. I wouldn't say it's some I wouldn't say like race out and see it, but you also have to keep in mind, like when I was watching this with my homie Chris afterwards we were like that was pretty good and also i was like eh, the little, some little things bugged me for instance they actually uh expand on the mythology which i oh, think really? is cool That's but i cool. don't think they were very successful at doing it they kind of add a new deadite oh really i'm not going to give it away well, there's... but they come up with something that's an idea that's pretty creepy i just uh-huh. don't think it's necessarily that well executed you might disagree well, like in the video games, like a fistful of boomstick, like you're yeah. ash and you have to go. I don't know if you played it, but you have to go to yeah. the Civil War. You have to go to the Colonial War. You have to make the, mm. the in the Civil War. You have to make the the North and the South get together and fight at like a fort. And you get like a Gatling gun as a instead of the chainsaw. Then you go in the future wow. and you you possess different deadites. Like there's oh, there's just different deadites. Like and then uh, Evil Dead Regeneration. There's there's always been a plethora of different deadites. And then the same thing with with um, Ash versus Evil Dead, the the TV show. It's the same thing. But that was a Monster of the Week show. I don't know if you watched it at all, but no. Oh, it's so fucking good. And then yeah. there's a scene in like season one with Mimi Rogers. Yeah. Uh, she, she, it's almost exactly the same as from this movie where she's up in the ceiling and she's a mother, you know? I'm like, well, yeah. Mimi Rogers fucking did that. And she, I haven't thought Mimi Rogers looked even scarier, dude, because she had the, the old school like dead eye makeup on, you know? She's got the big witch nose I gotta and check that white out, eyes, man. you know? Oh, Boy, that first she had great cans. That, full, that first season's so good, dude. Like, yeah. oh man, it's Monster of the Week, too, you know? So, oh, I, that's I, cool. oh man, I fucking love that show. It's so good. Yeah. Hard yeah, recommend. yeah, I'll, I'll, it's, it's been my on my list to check out. I mean, it's the a fact cheesy that it, too, but it's, it's fucking, it's the whole point, you know. I mean, it's yeah, like, I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's post, it's, it's, I mean, it's in the same uh, universe as uh, Evil the, Dead Two, Evil I, think. Dead. I think. Oh, so, I, oh, so not, so not, not, uh, doesn't include uh, Army of Darkness, like that's, um, I don't, kind of I, I, the I, chronology. I, I, I don't know. I think it does because an uh, Evil Dead Two Army of Darkness is part of the chronology because at the end of the movie, like he goes back in time to the medieval period, so they they don't have to really talk about Army of Darkness because it's already in the second movie. So yeah, well, um, that's how they can still tiptoe around it a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's I cool. mean, I I always thought that the alternate ending for uh, Army of Darkness was a hundred times better. Oh yeah, where the Dude. Twilight Zone ending where he like yeah. Rip Van Winkles and it's just Dude, like a post that's okay. future. That's what happens at the end of the se- at the end of the show too, but it's even fucking more like badass, like full fucking balls testosterone shit. Oh, like at the it- end of like season three or at the end of season one? Three. Like, oh, oh. dude, this shit's fucking all. It's fucking Mad Max, bro. Oh, nice. He's like, and then he's it's like, like Mad he- Max and fucking Mick Fury, like put together all fucking like gray haired up. He's got his car all souped up and nice. oh, it, it, like dude, they could. I would totally love that. You know, he's got a muscle car. You know. Oh damn! Um, and that's and like the, that last that was that was the last episode and that like, was the end. That was like the the end of the end of the end, like a little teaser, like to get you kind of fucking pumped up, like you ain't ever gonna see this type shit ending. Oh wow! Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, you, you, look, I, but, but yeah, it's, it's like my friend Chris and I were just like, it's like, but you like for evil dead five. Yeah. It's not bad. It's oh not, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so sure. you always have to like grade on a curve. So it's yeah. like a, it, as a horror sequel. Yeah. It's, it's, it's certainly good. It doesn't disappoint. Uh, folks go go I, I definitely recommend it go go check it out if you're a, a evil dead fan of course you got to you got to oh Looks what's like up you what need, up frank you need, e? ash. You need <laughs> ash but it's like there's so many deadites you know what i mean like that you could do like keep doing universes of it you know but you kind of need ash but a lot, a lot of yeah. people don't know like all the different monsters that come out of that book dude like there's a right. lot like you really could have a lot of heroes like you basically have to make someone other than ash but way better which is impossible but possible right Right. You and the I mean? thing is, nobody yeah, wants to see that. <laughs> nobody... it's, not, it's impossible, but it's possible. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, look, it's probable. I would be. It would be cool to, to if somebody really tries really hard to do something like that. I mean, yeah, it'd be hard, dude. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, well, you know. and you're, and it's, it's, it to, to be universally liked because there's yeah. gonna be those hardcore people like, no one's better than Ash in this movie. Yeah. You can't do that. How dare you? Nobody. Will, well, here's the thing. Nobody wants to see that character recast yeah no it's, definitely right you have to do you someone new do this kind of stuff right it's called passing the torch not yeah, yeah. you don't just ignore dude and and yeah. bring on a new dude no you get a dude new has to bring dude in right yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Or, 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 even, or even worse step on the old one that's what they they, they, they brought in two new characters out. for the tv that's show but they were kind of they were kind of weak you know what i mean Right, like right. I mean, right. Ash has to bring in his own successor. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And he does, but they're just, weak. Like, nah, they're to they're weak. Some, some chick has to show up. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. With That's a, what happens, dude. Right. Like, no, and I don't want. It, no, it has to be it, something, something better than that. I don't know. Right. It's it, it's not like you know. I mean, because if they're gonna do that, they're gonna do like what they did with like the Mandalorian. Right, yeah. where it's just like now it's not Mando, it's it's the Bo Katan show. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I didn't say Neil to some chick that they, they put up. I said that he has to be the one to pass the torch to the right. next guy yeah. to get mm -hmm. the fandom behind the next yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the next guy's yeah. got to be dope. Like, question. So, like, Pops has a really better, good you know? point. Step one: care about the fans. Yeah. yeah. Step yeah. two: start writing as if you care about the fans. <laughs> yeah. And if they brought in a cool like biker or bounty hunter type character, like, <laughs> that might be pretty dope. You know what I mean? I could see something like that, but they're not really doing anything like that, you know, or like well, a cowboy or something, you know. Well, one um, of the things I'll say about the people that are uh, running this franchise now, they certainly don't have hostility towards nah. the fans. No, you know? definitely not. They're not like Disney. They're not going to tell like, "Oh, you fans, yeah, fuck you. We don't <laughs> yeah. want you. Get out." We yeah. want the new fans, yeah, right. That don't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck that. Right, Marvel and DC. It's like it's just like we hate you, old fans. <laughs> Bring in the new fans that don't. Uh, wh wh where are they? They they don't exist. Yes. Right. Why are we not selling comics? Oh, it must be because like you know racism or something. You know, right. or you know some and kind Brian, of. And they're not selling comics because it's your fault. Yeah, it's well, all yeah, because I'm not buying you them. Too, I'm not Matt. buying you them. Keep helping him make it his fault. It's all yeah, your man. fault. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's white his man. Fault, yeah. It's your fault, white man. Well, white straight male, you know, and uh, and also a um, a uh, you know, a, a transphobe because you know I won't date a chick with a dick. Oh you know? man, I'm sorry. Just, I, I'm sorry if I get no, those panties just, off I, and boing 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 boing, boing <laughs> a boner pops up in my face. Sorry, that's a deal breaker for me. I realize that makes me a bad person, but you um, know. no, I'm not gay either. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not gay if it's a woman with a penis. Bob. Um, I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying. I'm using um, every yes, I, No, 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 no. If I respond to that in a sexual way, then I'm gay. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're gonna get canceled, dude. You're gonna get canceled for saying that. Shit. I'm already canceled. Wait a minute. What? 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 I know, right? Is that, okay. that, that, you that's... cannot cancel me. I've been canceled by the best. I know. I yeah. know. I mean, like, like it's like the societal equivalent of you can't fire me. I quit. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I mean, In order I've to be canceled, canceled you have to best. participate. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You you have to fucking participate. You have to get on your knees and go. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but if you don't, and you just say Look, fuck it, I'm yeah, you have to be Paul Stanley. Right. 
I'm not a victim. I'm not going to be a victim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dude, all right, I, I'm, I'm using every every ounce of strength I have in my body to not derail this even further. No, no, that's that that's awesome, cool. that that's awesome good. that awesome news story about the homeless guy going into the New York eatery. Oh, I know. Yeah, let's charge him with murder for protecting everybody in the car. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that wasn't that's not no, it's a different one. Homeless homeless guy goes into a New York eatery and defecates on a pride flag because it's the only thing close by. And there's enough of these things hanging up in the restaurant that he can reach out and grab another one to wipe himself with. <laughs> his well, name, his the, this guy's last name is Innocent. It's literally his where, last name. Where, well, the, the, here's the thing. It also depends. Like the like the, the uh, na- that's a good one. The nature I got of the that. crime. You have a lot of layers to your humor. There, it does depend. It, it right. His first name Whoopi or Wipey. <laughs> Wipey. Yeah, well, here's the rolling. thing, because it really also depends on on like where the crime is committed, right? Mm. Like, remember, like that James O'Keefe thing where he like, uh, where basically he like, and, and I, I, and I think you, James O'Keefe is a human canker sore, but when he fucking caught that dude, that was mm-hmm. just you know, uh, that was just dropping fucking major fucking. Uh, information and secrets got him to admit some pretty pretty damning shit he then was just like 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 don't like don't let him leave to like the staff at the restaurant and the Mm. restaurant actually locked the doors that prevented him and his friends from leaving which is felony kidnapping yep yep the staff at the restaurant were like okay well who do i listen to the guy that's telling me to open the door, or the guy that's telling me to like basically uh, commit felony kidnapping. Well, where's where are they on the progressive stack? Gay black man, uh, straight conservative white dude, right? And where where are we? Williamsburg, hello. So you know, it's not like uh, it's not like they had any choice in uh, in uh, in, the, in that case. <laughs> Oh my god. You like man. that one. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of scat scat. Hey man, look, I just want everybody to be fucking that happy. Not me. <laughs> that one made me happy. That one made me happy. But yeah, no, I mean it's so it's just like it depends it depends on uh depends on where you where you where, where you're at, you know, and what right. the politics of uh of uh that I just think it's hilarious to see like Two sacred cows, and they don't know. It's like the left doesn't know what the left hand. The left hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. Yeah, who's yeah. the bad guy here? Is it the? Is it? The, they're going after one of their own. Yeah, I just, I just like, like going to like sit back look, and watch this, look, and watch this you, cage if, match if, unfold. If, yeah, man. If what your movement is about is wrong, you always end up eating your own. I like the way we'll your humor also. I like the way you also have puns in your humor, pops. If your movement, I know oh, what you're snap. saying. Oh snap! I know what you're thank saying. You, thank you very much. If your it's movement nice has a bowel movement. It's, it's nice when people appreciate my puns. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah. What up, dude? Good. That's to see you, line. That's rolling. Over yeah. there at Silverline Comics. So, Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Thank you so much for hanging out. So, yeah, we are talking about George Romero's Martin tonight. Uh, Martin was a movie that Romero made, uh, what, 1976? Came out in 77? Right. Uh, also was released in a hour and 22-minute version in Italy uh, by Dario Argento with a new soundtrack by Goblin in 1978 and uh is not one of well i would say it's one of romero's better known movies but not to normies i would say if you're a horror fan you know this movie uh you love this movie uh it was uh available on video cassette relatively early because it was like a little indie picture uh as a matter of fact i think they've got the clamshell right there it is EMI. That's the one I remember, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. With a quote from Newsweek, Newspeak, mm. as, I, as I call it now, Romero has become a dazzling stylist. His balance of wit and horror is the best. A new nightmare from the director of Night of the Living Dead. See it with someone you're sure of. That's a cool poster. This one's pretty crazy. Love me. It's got like oh. a 
bat coming fly, like vampire mm-hmm. bat coming flying out of his mouth. <laughs> Not sure if I, agree, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of weird. It's fun. It's fun as like an alternate, you know, What's up, Vic? kind of misleading. Yeah. Uh, this image, of course, I think is really good because it's mm-hmm. got him with the uh, the hypodermic needle in his mouth. Yeah. And I don't know if you caught that, but that, of course, it's just like that represents like the, the fangs. Those right. are his fangs, are the hypodermic right. needles. It, is there something? Is it? Is it just the way they shot it, and I and, and they're going for a contrast in the background, or am I supposed to be picking up something subtle from the shadow on the wall? Everything in this movie is done very, very carefully, very, very deliberately. Uh, this movie was shot by Michael Gornick, who shot most of. Uh, Romero's movies went on also to uh, shoot like some major Hollywood pictures. Um, This is one of those movies that is very, very deliberately shot in almost an almost painterly way. But also the main thing about this movie is the fucking editing. And yeah, especially with the flashbacks and stuff. Right. And also with the uh, scene that is like kind of the centerpiece of this picture with the home invasion. Mm. The way that that's edited is astounding. Yes, yeah, it's edit, good. Right? And <clears throat> Romero generally edited his own films. He didn't have an editor. He was the editor. And that's like a filmmaker's filmmaker kind of a move. But what that was the thing about Romero. It's not that Hollywood didn't come calling. They did. It's that it's just that he was very late and reluctant in uh, accepting that call because he understood that when you're an indie guy, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you're making a movie for the man. You're following the man's rules. Yeah. And so he did definitely, uh, you know, dabble in Hollywood. He ended up making uh Monkey Shines for Hollywood. He ended up making uh, also. Yeah, I saw that one in the theaters. That yep. was really good. Oh, uh, terrific, terrific, underrated in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, then he also did the Dark Half, which is I uh, was a little bit less. Uh, uh, um, I wouldn't say co- commercially successful. I would say a little less artistically successful. He, the only guy I've ever seen who could make that transition. Uh, flawlessly was uh, Cronenberg. Right? Yeah, you look like- yeah, yeah. All of their early stuff, it's got that 1970s aesthetic. You know, where you're, um, the one thing that got me with this one was always, and I think you said something about it too, and it wasn't that you couldn't use more, that there wasn't more realistic blood available. It was something, was it something about the rating systems or it was, it would, if it was the blood was too realistic or? Because well, remember, like, there's there's the right. red blood, and then there's blood that looks like blood. Right. Well, where it has, you know, it gets a little brownish and everything. Yeah, translucent, more gelatinous or jelly, like, like you can right. see through it more. Right. The classic formula for movie blood is carol corn syrup with food coloring. Yeah. yeah. Say corn syrup, right? <laughs> yeah. And in something like Raging Blood, Ra- Ra- uh, Raging Bull, since it was shot in black and black and white, mm-hmm. uh, Hershey's chocolate syrup. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, but I can't remember where I heard it. I thought you had said something about it, where you can you can date a horror movie based on the color of the blood. Yes, yes, yeah. very often, very often. <laughs> uh, and this, of course, the uh, the makeup effects, which are fucking gruesome. I mean, there, there's not a lot of, of, of gore in this, but what's yeah. there, rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the effects are, of course, by uh, the great uh, Tom Savini. Mm-hmm. And mind you, what you're using as a color in a film, what you're seeing in real life and what how it turns up on film are often very, very different. Yeah, sure. Like he looks back on Dawn of the Dead, it was like you know, in retrospect, painting everybody blue, all the zombies blue, wasn't like really a very good idea. And it's just like, yeah, I okay. noticed that too, but I figured it was just like it was the, the reason they did that. It was fresh. They were, you know, it had only it had been like what less than forty eight hours, right? Yeah, right. And of course, there's so many of them. It's not like you could do uh, individual zombie makeup the way. 
that yeah, he did. it would have taken forever. Right, yeah. it would have ta- exactly. Uh, and of course, when you've got a giant crowd scene, scene of zombies, and it's a low budget movie, it's not like yeah. it's not like uh, The Walking Dead where you right. have like a gigantic effects budget, and uh, you've got a crew that's been doing this now for years, and they can just. And I got uh, Ted Turner back in you. <laughs> well, yeah, and you figure like how many how many people were? I mean, when Dawn of the Dead was made, zombies and the and the Living Dead were only just becoming a thing. By the time you've got The Walking Dead, you've right. got an entire fan base of people who've been doing this thing for Halloween, want to yep. do it for a living, and you're yep. surrounded by makeup artists who know exactly what to do. Right, but at the same time, when The Walking Dead first came out. Uh, you know, hail Frank Darabont for doing that amazing first season. Because I mm. think every season since has been shit, personally. But I, I am grateful that it was The Walking Dead, unquestionably, that brought practical effects back. Mm-hmm. Because they were, you know, uh, no pun intended, practically gone. Everything was yeah. CGI. You looked at the fucking... That's one of the things that really annoyed me about... Uh, about uh, the uh, Resident Evil movie, the first one was like I was like CGI zombies, really? Yeah, don't, and, I mean, I mean, Land of the Dead was pretty good too, but I don't, I think that came out right before Walking Dead. And it her, did. And yeah, Bernie did some of the designs for that. That was pretty cool. It did. I still don't know why they messed with the skyline like that. Yeah. Well, look, uh, Land of the Dead. I remember seeing that in its theatrical release, uh, being really disappointed. Uh, I don't think it's a very good film. I think it's an okay one. I think it has great moments. Uh, once yeah. again, I think it's a case of you take the man's money, you make the man's movie. Before you jump off of Walking Dead, I want to show you guys something. The director's cut's well, better, I think, too, of that movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. What you got there? This is the Walking Dead store in Georgia, too. Oh, no shit. Yeah, I got a, uh, um, yeah, well, some different it. things. There you that, go. You know that they gave us, but uh, yeah, they, I got a uh, the, the the Walking Dead store. There you go. Wow, <laughs> it's a comic book logo too. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff from them. Man, they're cool as hell down there. Well, one of the things that I that that I that I've always liked about like the zombie design in that is that the zombies look like the zombies in the comic books. Yeah, they do. Right? They got Walking Dead tours. Nice. All that stuff down there. Because that's where the set is. Right. Right. Right, right, right. right. Oh, I forgot I had this badass magnet. Yeah, I mean, look. What, what, like, what, <laughs> right, what, why not fucking uh, market that shit for tourism dollars? Yeah, dude. They, yeah. You know, um, marketing. I keep... <laughs> Marketing, guys, it's the most important thing after doing the product. It is. It is. I know that's going to be a, that's going to be a huge learning experience. Yeah. Five years from now, when this thing is done. Well, yeah, but here's the thing: you can learn from what people before you have done right, and also, especially, mm-hmm. learn from our fucking blunders. Right? Oh yeah, I mean, learn I'm more from attention. our blunders than anything else. The shit that was right. Yeah. The shit, I'm, like the I'm shit paying attention for do. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing is we learn from the people before us and everybody. We're always in this community, this indie community. We're always learning shit. People come up with new shit that then we're like, oh, that was a genius idea. I think I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody's fucking jealous, you know, because it's just like, hey, if I come up with a cool idea that helps my friends, that's not taking yeah. anything away from me. That's just fucking you, spreading the love. You guys and, know, uh, yeah. You guys know how Lori makes those the short films yeah. for her comic, right? Yeah, it's really smart. I come up with ideas, but I don't have the props or the people to help me pull off the idea that I come up with for her. So I just tell her, hey, you should try this or do this and this. And she'll get her friends or her family together and actually right. act it out or or help me figure out a way so that I can do it. Like what Doc and I did for this most recent one where I got shot. I got shot. In her, yeah, in her you got video. fucked down, bro. You got fucked down. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> you got blasted. You got blasted. <laughs> yeah, it looked like I hurt, bro. 
Yeah, you but wear a squibby. In, in her story, you just come back, though. You see, that's what's cool about it. You don't die, right? You well, just come back. Well, that's the uncool part about it. Ah, shit, I'm dead. Are you talking about like being written into the book? You got shot, or you wore a squibby? No, I was. In, I I did a. Me and Doc did a little cut in her latest short film. Yeah. Okay. We're actually yeah, in the funny. film. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. I'm doing Doc's show, actually. <laughs> I think we were doing Doc's coffee shop. That was fun. And we just like, you know, acted like we were in the show and acted out what she wanted us to act out as part of the show. And then she incorporated into her short film. <laughs> it's awesome, dude. Yeah, it's really cool. It, it is really cool. This is probably my favorite of the fan posters. I really like this one right here. Right? With the... uh with the hypodermic needles oh, and, the, uh, and, and the razor, razor blades. Oh. Ooh, that's <laughs> kind of creepy, actually. Really creepy. That's yeah. like a lot yeah. in the eyes. And uh, yeah, that once again, that's a made in America, made in USA. The razor blade <laughs> with the fangs. And uh, here's a tie poster. I always love the tie posters. Those are really interesting. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember look. I remember. Uh, oh yeah, this is a really great one. This is probably my favorite, actually. And this isn't this is a real poster too. This is not a uh, this is not a fan poster, but I could also see where somebody would think that this uh, would find this poster misleading. I just, yeah. I just I just love it. I just I I just think it's uh, think it's spectacular. This is a fan poster, like a new one that I think is pretty dope. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some people have come come up with some with some pretty uh, with some pretty cool ones. This is a real poster right here. I mm. think this is like the for the uh, the. Uh, British, the UK release. I don't think that this movie was listed as one of the video nasties. <laughs> uh, um, you know, it's. Uh, I don't think I like that, that one. Was... Yeah, is that the, uh, that's. I think that's the best one. I think so too. Kind of so does a lot, you know. Yeah. It, Did it, you ever it, see the uh, John Amplis's um, entry for IMDb? No. He's the. Um, he he's the. Uh, the zombie coming out of the grave in the very first Father's Day story and uh, yes, creep show. Yes, <laughs> uh, he's also the Puerto Rican guy that gets shot and at the beginning of Dawn of the Dead. Jeez, there's a thousand pigs. He's that guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is his first performance. Romero found him as uh, as he did most of the cast as part of the Pittsburgh theater scene. Mm -hmm. uh, Romero was not originally from from Pittsburgh. His family was i think pretty uh like a petty bourgeois uh cuban right mm. so they were like uh the descendants of spaniards that had settled in in, in cuba and so they were like well to do which meant they had to get the hell out mm. when yeah when castro, took, when over, castro yeah. took over and he ended up uh being born and raised in the bronx mm. and uh i think uh, very early in his film career, he uh, had to avoid getting arrested by the police because he brought a dummy to the top that he made to like the top of the apartment building where he lived and set it on fire and threw it off the building and filmed it <laughs> on its way down with an eight millimeter camera. <laughs> and that's that's a book. Yeah, so he was somebody who came from money and then found himself uh, poor mm. or growing up poor in the Bronx and uh went to school uh uh and uh went to college or university at uh in pittsburgh and ended up never leaving ended up uh uh spending the rest of his uh, life there this Although place I does that to you honestly a lot of people that move here stay here a lot of people that are born here stay here it's one of the reasons why the the, the uh, economic experience is why we got a lot of tire kickers in this area hey man i'm thinking about moving there myself that's actually the number one place I'm thinking about moving to. Washington County, man, it's a, uh, it's, it's nice. It's, it's, uh, it's far enough away from the city that you don't have to, you know, worry about being in it. But um, yeah. yeah, let me know, man. I'll, we'll, oh, uh, for we'll... sure, for sure. Uh, plan right now is to probably move out of here, rent a place for a little bit, and then figure out what my final place. Well, we're 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 gonna we're gonna lay, uh, lay up stakes finally. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I am I am thinking absolutely. Uh, Pittsburgh, just outside outside of Pittsburgh is uh, is uh, definitely uh, very high on my list. So uh, 
man, uh, uh, Amplis ended up uh, not moving to Hollywood. He's one of those guys, I suppose, maybe if he had. That's the thing about the Romero actors is a lot of people don't think of – Romero never got – and Cronenberg's like this too. Those guys are actors' directors, and they never get the credit for it because they're horror directors. And, uh, man – um, so many great performances in the Romero movies by these local actors. Um, you know, he also uses a lot of amateur actors and you can always uh, pick them out uh, because they stand out, especially when they're uh, mixed in with, uh, with uh, real actors. Uh, Lincoln uh, Maisel, who plays uh, Martin's um, cousin, the old man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, He's this from the amusement park. It looks like they went right to Kennywood from this movie and started filming. Because he's right. wearing, the, isn't he wearing the exact same thing? I, it, it's, it's, it's entirely possible. Here's the thing. Uh, the amusement park, I, I should mention, is a movie that Romero made for the Lutheran church. Right. Right. Who wanted him to make a movie about how uh, this country treats its old people. And it uh, affected a little, almost a little too, because I have to say, uh, when that premiered on Shutter last year, my friend Chris and I watched that, and we both had the same attitude, which was that was incredible, that was awesome. I don't ever want to watch that again. Yeah, because it sh it absolutely shook us to our core. Yeah, there there's a couple of movies like that where it's it's not even. It's, it's not, not necessarily the movie as a whole, but there will be right. one scene or one line that sticks to your brain forever. And like in, uh, was it Gone Baby Gone? Ben right. Affleck or uh, Casey Affleck in there. And there's the description about that that negligent mother leaving her kid in the backseat of a black car on the beach for two hours while she's off getting high. And it's just like that. That It's just two people talking, but it's done so well. I'm like, I just, I don't want to watch this again. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too, too effective. A Ra Eraserhead is one of those movies I've only seen like a handful of times. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Cannibal Holocaust. Glad I saw it. Don't want to watch it again. Right. What's the? Uh, uh, was it the the green? Uh, green. The Green Inferno, Inferno is Inferno. Like, is the uh, is like the Eli Roth ripoff of that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I've Fuck seen that <laughs> a long time ago. The the, the the dude gets chopped up. I thought that was pretty effective. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, he's one of those guys like Tarantino doesn't have an original bone in his body, but uh, but I also haven't seen the Green Inferno, so I sh I should I shouldn't really give an opinion about it. Uh, but you know, it's just like it's kind of like the Tarantino movies. It's just like, oh, you're gonna watch a new Tarantino movie? No, why not? I've already seen it. Yeah, it's well, he you mean like he rips himself off? No, like he rips off other people. And like, and uh, you know, so it's just like the Green Inferno. I've seen, I've seen enough can Italian cannibal movies. I don't need to see an American version of an Italian. Movie. Right, right. But, but that's just that's just me. Uh, you know, I just, I just really don't like those guys. Uh, them and uh, and um, and Rob Zombie. It's just like, <laughs> you know, it's just like if they would do something original, I would be like, okay, I'm down. But you know, uh it's just, uh, you know, it's just like, in other words, it's just like, why would I, it's like drinking non-alcoholic beer or it's just like, okay, well, why would I watch decaf coffee? Right. Decaf <laughs> coffee. It's just like, well, why would I go for the fake thing when I could get the real thing? Right. Right. Why would I want the watered down version when I could get the real rock and the real <laughs> rock is right over there on my shelf. Right. Um, don't fake the funk is what I'm saying. And those guys kind of fake the funk. Um, so uh, yeah, no, I mean, I you know, I didn't like when I when I when I first saw the amusement park, that was a shock to me, because I thought that this actor actually was Romanian. Mm. He so oh. absolutely and utterly convincing. To, so so to hear him speak English without an accent, I was just like, holy shit! The fuck? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> When uh, the, when you uh, the, the first time you hear like Daniel Day Lewis talk, 
Oh yeah, it's weird. You didn't, speak, you didn't <laughs> right. know that he was like English. Or Jerry right. Oldman. <laughs> well, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. My, my sister was sit, watched him get the Academy Award for My Left Foot. She was totally blown away that he got up and walked up to the right. stage. Right. Oh Chameleon. yeah. yeah. Chameleons. Yeah. Right. Chameleon style actors. And this guy, this guy absolutely was one of them, uh, because I just thought that he was just a dude. That Romero found once again with yeah. You know, I like the, the way you talk. Do you want to be in a movie? Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, I mean, but that's one of the things that's also effective with the way he works in the amateur actors with the real actors. Yeah, smart. Right. Sure. And, well, yeah, because you're just it's just going to give your amateurs a better performance. And the universe is like a little more realistic in some ways too. Like, way um, more, way more uh, grounded. Yeah. And. That's something that's especially important in this film because it's about a young man who may or may not be a vampire. One thing is for sure, he is killing people and drinking their blood. Hmm. And ultimately, is he a real vampire? Is he a product of the supernatural? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's completely uh, irrelevant in this story which is one of the things I think is one of the points of the film. It, th 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 there's a reason why he leaves it open to interpretation. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that people who are trying to figure out uh, whether he's really a vampire or not, I think are kind of missing the point because it's like the turn of the screw, which to me is the, ex is the, is the greatest example of a literary mind fuck ever. Uh, where Henry James has you constantly wondering, Quentin Jessel, the uh, the ghosts, are they actual ghosts? Or are they products of the governess's fevered imagination or, mm. or a product of, uh, or, of her madness, right? And every chapter in that book, it's just like, oh, the ghosts are real. Oh, no, wait, they're definitely not. No, they definitely are. <laughs> right. No, they def they're definitely not. No, they are. They aren't. They Definitive. And Right. And so people asked Henry James, well, what's the deal? And he was just like, if you're asking me that, you don't understand the story. Mm. It's like, you have to know, right? The author has to know, but the audience doesn't have to know. Yeah, right. Never. Yeah. Sometimes I can see where, like the last movie that I went to a theater to see was the, uh, the final decision of the main character to either go to the left or go to the right was left to open because he represented a large, he, he represents humanity. And the question to everybody is still open realistically right now. Right. So I understand that, but right. it's, there are times where I want to walk up to a picture and know what I'm looking at. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Where you do want an answer. But there's yeah. also stories like this, like the turning of the screw, where it's just like the whole point is that you don't know that you'll never know. And if you're trying to figure it out, you're missing the point of the story. And uh, and this, of course, it's just ultimately that it's irrelevant. Right. Is Martin 84 years old or is he 20? Don't know. Doesn't matter. Right. Is is uh, is uh, his psychosis hereditary? Because that's a, that's also a strong possibility. That's what I was thinking. Like, is it hereditary? Is it Stockholm syndrome? Is he schizophrenic? Um, right. <clears throat> there's been people because... that like say that you know that could speak in different languages and do other things, but then you have the factor of his grandpa that just keeps hammering it home to him, non or his uncle, right? Right. Um, well, no, actually, his cousin. His cousin, right? Right. Because I thought it was his him. uncle too. Yeah, it looks like his grandpa or something, you know. I, right, I know. right, right. But that's and 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 okay, is it a combination? Because that's a strong possibility yeah. that it's hereditary mental illness and having it pounded into his head from day yeah. one that this that our family has this curse. It's a yeah. big burger, yeah. Right, or maybe there actually is a curse. Although, of course, as Martin, a fulfilling prophecy. Right. And as uh, Martin himself points out, and to me, it's the most poignant thing about this film is that there's no such thing as magic. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> and when he says it, it's, it's with a sense of uh, mourning, right? That, there is, that there's nothing supernatural about him, right? He can't hmm. turn into a bat. 
He could see his own reflection. So uh, his his character understands that what it means to be a be a vampire isn't going to be something from these legendary stories. It's going to be a honest to god natural. Some people just like to drink blood, and other people made these stories up years ago to you know kind of cope with the idea that people like him exist. Yeah, that's that's also a possibility. Now, this is a total non sequitur, but I do have to point this out because I'm a horror geek, and uh, you are. Yeah, that and... is right there. I'm only just picking no, up on this now. No, no, no. That that dude, this oh. dude right here, mm -hmm. is the guy in Night of the Living Dead at the end who says, "I think I heard a noise." <laughs> so he's, he's, he. This is the guy who shoots Dwayne Jones right in the head, and at the end of Night of the Living Dead. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's what, I didn't say that was, that was, was it, what's, what's Gomez's name from the I feel like he TV should show? also. John, John Aston. John Aston. Yeah. It looked no, like that, him no, getting right there. Him. Doesn't that look like him a little bit? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the stash <laughs> and everything. The lighting. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a little. Oh, my God. And this Gomez. movie's so 70s. The clothes. <laughs> mm -hmm. The fucking atrocious. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the cars. Uh, wallpaper. Even the shape of his, the, the princess phone. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes. So yeah, that's one of the things that's that's also great. and also uh, actual trains with and like Romero. sleeping cars. It's cool seeing Romero in here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, play like yeah, a modern yeah. like a uh, priest in like the 1970s. The young you know? hip priest. Young hip priest for sure. Just kind of laughing, smoking. You know, like yeah, sure, buddy. You know, talking to the uncle or whatnot. Yeah, he's so he big, dude. He's tall. He's a giant. He was uh, like seven feet tall. And uh, he would say he would joke that like when people would look for him on a set like like on like on the set of like Land of the Dead, which was like this <laughs> yeah. big production, and you had yeah. these big crowd scenes. He said like like when people needed to find me, they would just look for like the disembodied head that was floating kind of around. Floating around. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's funny. You're all my zombies. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah. A, uh, uh, a huge dude. Uh, uh, sadly, I, I never met him. I should have. There were things that were going on and, like, like very close to me. I have no excuse for not, for not attending. Everybody I know who met that guy without fail says he was awesome, that he was humble, 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 uh, you know, um, just a reg like, just a dude. Um, yeah, uh, somebody who was also very grateful to his fans. And I remember seeing Land of the Dead or wait, uh, Dawn of the Dead, like such a young age. I think I was like 10 years old or something like that. Yeah, me too. I remember like my grandpa, my uncle, like they came over to my house and my, my mom, my dad, we all watched it. <laughs> we were like, but it, it was Aww. fun. But I was just like, damn, that's a crazy fucking movie, you know? Um, yeah, man. And after that, I kind of like was kind of like thought about it, you know what I mean? Like I always thought about Night of the Living Dead, you know, and um, uh, the, the Romero movies, you know what I mean? I, I you know, I, I of course had seen Night of the Living Dead on TV. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting all ready to watch it and because I'd read about it in all my monster magazines, naturally. So it was one of those movies yeah. I had known. I'd always known it existed. Yeah. I don't remember a moment where I was like, oh, there's this thing called Night of the Living Dead. It's just you just knew about it. Right. If yeah. you're a monster kid. Right. And so they were showing it on TV and I was like, oh, great. And I turned off all the lights, which is what I would normally do when I would sit, sit down to watch a horror movie. And then I found myself turning the lights on that had a weird that was the same effect on me yeah because uh, I mean, i'd seen it on some like creature feature thing while i was babysitting my, my 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 buddy's little brother everybody was gone for the night and it was you know like a suburbia i was only six houses away i only needed to walk home street lights were on it's the 80s no big problems right right i still didn't like the idea of just walking out just that far. <laughs> oh, and I was, I mean, I was this far away from driving a car and it still messed with my head. <laughs> I remember Don just like being like this, like they told that what sold me on it too. It was just like, there's, there's bikers fighting zombies in a mall. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why whole, I yeah. engaged. That sounded See, cool to me. And my uncle, yeah. he kind of looked like Savini. He was a biker, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was a criminal too, but yeah, um, yeah. he, he, he looked just like him and he was like all, all about that fucking movie. So was my dad, you know? Yeah, and uh, yeah, that that I love that scene though, you know. Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's, Tom it's... Savini. He does have that. <laughs> he's 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 got the like those strong features, that hook nose, like yeah, he's a character. Yeah, dude. When the first time I every time I look at his face, I, I think I he's here to ask me where the money is. 
He's in he's in land too. That's what's funny. Like yeah, the is. zombie is still alive. That's the, the same zombie. character. Yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. alive. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Fucking dope. Yes. Although the fact that he didn't do any effects, that it's just like, dude, like really, you couldn't like blast like a fake head with a twelve gauge <laughs> shotgun just for old time. Wouldn't that be cool? Old like comic, sake. like the zombie, like of the biker, you know, like the Tom Savini biker, like a comic of him, like. <laughs> Because in land, like they're, they're starting to evolve, you know, with the gas station attendant. Smarter. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. evolving. Big daddy. At that point. <sighs> and, and it ends right there. Like he did Diary, which was diarrhea. Like, I don't like that movie. Like, that's that's yeah. like probably my least favorite out of all of his movies that I could that think of. That was a reboot. Oh, well, no. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a masterpiece comp- compared, compared to Island. Island yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That, but broke, like, that broke my heart, dude. For me, Land was the last one. Like, in, in like it felt like a like a last yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was, yeah, it was meant to be. It was meant to and, be. And it felt like they were they were evolving, you know? like in, Which is but, really yeah. scary. That's just really it's scary. Scary as fuck. And, and, you know, it's just a lot of cool things. Like, little cool ideas in there. A little Carpenter. You know, a little, little a Mad Max in there. You know, a little Romero know. in there. Like, I just, just ideas. I know, but it's just like... The problem with that movie was that he, he was... Listening to the critics, yeah, he was listening, listening to, to everybody. Academics. Listen, listening I think a lot. Of, I think he was listening to everybody, dude. And you just that's what kind of came out, you know. And then yeah. ultimately, the Hollywood money had to, you know. But it's but the idea, movie. like to, what could come after that, you know, I, I would totally read a, a comic book of. Uh, oh my god, the Savini, yeah. the Savini biker. <laughs> and Romero ah. actually ended up writing a a, a a sequel called Empire of the Dead. Oh yeah. Uh, where yeah, he brings that. in vampires and shit, and it's just a mess. Oh, the really? problem is, is that Romero wa- didn't want to do more zombies, but it's all he yeah. was allowed to do. So when people yeah, are like, "Oh, that. like there's this yeah. this George Romero screenplay, maybe someone's gonna make it into a movie," I'm like, "Shut the fuck up!" It's yeah. like you didn't give a fuck when he was alive. Everyone yeah. was just like, "No, just do more zombie movies, do more zombies, more zombies, more zombies." Yeah, so he wanted to do other shit. He had other yeah. shit he wanted to do. No, they they would not fucking let him do it. Let I him mean, look, this go. movie, dude. Look at like this is a very interesting, creative vampire movie. You know? Oh my god, it's psychological. It's like it, it's very visionary. Um, it kind of reminds me of the movie we watched last week. It reminds me of um, right? uh, Maniac a little bit too. You know, yep. like the whole like mm-hmm. psycho killer. Aside, uh, kind of from the, the point of, of view of the yeah, from the point of yeah. view of the maniac, absolutely. At a, at a, at a, it's an older movie too. Usually, like a lot of these movies, kind of were popular like in the eighties and nineties. But there's now I'm saying there's so many more that were that that captured that that side of the killer uh, perspective from a, from a, that standpoint in film. And the talk also, radio aspect of this was a little different. Oh yeah, well that but I wasn't was, sure if he was doing that because. Like the very first radio station ever is in Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I heard KD, about that. <laughs> yeah, KD, yeah, KDKA is the very first radio station on the planet. That's true. Yeah. I remember learning that actually in college in like yeah. a radio and TV history class. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, there was, I heard that. It, but it is kind of cool though, because you'll, you'll have people call in. It's just like something like this, you know, before you have, what's up, Carrie? Before you have any, um, uh, like social media or anything like that. Exactly. You know, that's what you did. You called into a radio show, and if you were a good guest and people liked you, you kept calling back in. What up, Carrie? Hey, Pops, you there? Carrie wants yeah, to know he... if you're feeling any better. Well, I, I, I... Uh, yeah, we he's, could, yeah. He's, he's, feeling he's hanging in there. He's hanging in there, Carrie. Thank you so much for hanging out. And what up, Mike? Good to see you, brother. Uh, really quick, I want to run the trailer for this because it's – this is not a typical trailer. This is a trailer that you'll see is really kind of like its own short film, like a Hitchcock trailer. Check this out. Nice. My name is Martin. I'm 84 years old. People think I'm, I'm crazy. I'm 84 years old. Them. What? I'm 84 years old. How old I am. I'd like to be normal. I just have a sickness. The only way I can survive is by drinking blood. Now, this is interesting here, too, because these are the scenes that we see in uh, black and white, in black and white yeah. right, that, right. that are uh, here in color. And one of the things, all, well, we're, we're, we're going to talk about this because it turns out that there is a three hour black and white version cut of this movie. Strange. And of the uh, whole movie or of the, of the flashbacks as its own movie? No, no, no. Well, of, that would be kind of cool. Of, of, Mar- of Martin. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll get into that. It's 
not easy living the way. This guy right here, by the way, porn actor. Oh, really? <laughs> a typecast. Careful all the time. I'm pretty good at. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if if Romero knew that he was doing smut, but he probably if he did, he didn't care. I mean, Romero was like a super liberal lefty guy. I, I think as I get older, I get better. I haven't been caught yet. Martin, another kind of terror. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, Dave, like you were talking about, like, the radio. That mm -hmm. gives you, the radio show, that yeah. gives you a chance to hear Martin monologue. Because there are many scenes in this movie where I was thinking, like, I could imagine a voice. Yeah, over. like a storytelling device. Yeah. Right. So it gives you a chance to, for, to get inside his head. And get some exposition. To get some exposition with right. and, and also his worldview without uh, uh, the uh, device of a voiceover, which uh, I, I never had a problem with, but drives a lot of people crazy. You see, people don't understand what's wrong. They think that I'm a monster. They think I'm a vampire. Yeah, that's a wonderful scene. Where he's dressed up as a classical vampire, uh, yeah. And all and he's trying to do there is just throw the scent off. Well, I mean, here he, what he's doing is he's just tormenting uh, uh, cousin <laughs> Kuda. I will say he is kind of ghoulish. Like um, uh, oh, the sure. the first part of the trailer where it's the black and white scene, but in color, the way he looks up, he kind of looks kind of baddish, dude. Kind of like um, I don't know, man. Kind of kind of like a bat a little bit, like a little like a like a ghoul a little bit in his face i never really noticed it too much but just that one expression with his big old black eyes you know oh yeah Remember, like oh. the vampire baby in the national Enquirer, you know <laughs> right 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 yeah, um, yeah, yeah. i kind of got that vibe boy. like i never Bad even boy. thought about it but he does look kind of baddish dude the actor well, like it's the weekly face. world news and it's bat boy right there yeah get your references one. straight man <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, if, I, I guess in black and white, I, I should have noticed it more, more starkly, but I don't know with that. He just definitely looks more vampiric for sure. Good, right. good casting too. Cause I, I mean, I, I'm all, I'm all about casting unknowns and seeing unknowns in movies. Cause it just oh sells God. the realism of it even more. It really, um, it really does. And what's so great about Amplis's performance in this is that Martin is a rapist murderer. Yeah. hundred percent. But you really do identify with him and you really do feel for him because there is a tremendous innocence to him. He's because it's not that he's because I remember thinking, boy, he's very boyish in this. I'm like, yeah, well, he's yeah. like, you know, a 20 year old actor, right. but it's, it, he doesn't behave like a 20 year old. No, like he, he has everything in, under control pretty much. Um, and when he needs to speak, when he needs to say something, really wants to, it seems like he does it, you know? Right. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, well, the, some it, of those it's one sided, the Some of the one-sided conversations were a little entertaining. Oh, yeah. Just as sure. in where, where um, the guy doesn't say anything. It's like that scene in 40-Year-Old Virgin. All you have to do is say what they're saying back to them only in the form of a question. Are you reading magazines? I don't know. Am I reading magazines? No, oh, <laughs> you're so mysterious, you know. Right, right, right. times that happens. Right. But it is interesting seeing these black and white scenes in color. Yeah. People don't realize that those things I see in the movies are not real. I don't have a whole lot of women. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that's one of the. A lot of people think that that's really what this movie is about. It's about uh, sex and violence, and uh, obviously uh, obsession. But I mean, once again, going back to Peeping Tom, that also is very much about sex and violence being uh, 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 intertwined. Because you know uh, what Martin's doing is is he's doping his victims up. He's picking his victims very carefully, right? Because like he says. He's like a hunter. He has to be very, very careful about not getting caught. That's one of the reasons why he gets naked before he drinks their blood is so he can wash it off. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he like he, 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 you know, takes advantage of these women in their 
when, when they're knocked out, he's raping them in their sleep. And then he's drinking their blood, but he's also doping them up because he doesn't want them to suffer. Uh, killing, them was kind, like that too. killing them with kindness. Well, well yeah. The and then and that's sadism. the thing. It's, it's almost like you're, you're hypocritical. You're killing somebody, but you don't want to feel bad about it. Well, yeah. no, it's that. Well, yeah, but also it's that he's not sadistic. Right. He's not getting he's not getting off on their fear. He's not getting off on their pain. Yeah. Right. It's nice to watch them. I watch them a lot all the time. I have to to be sure that nothing goes wrong. I follow them. I plan. I'm very careful. That beeping noise was driving me crazy because I, I, I was like listening to it, watching it. And then I'd heard <laughs> that beep. And I'm like, it was such a perfect pitch. It's the exact pitch of my fire uh, smoke alarm whenever the battery's dying. <laughs> yeah, right. I have needles now. I can use them. Yeah, and so many shots in this of him with the hypodermic needle in his teeth mm -hmm. once yeah. again uh, be representing fangs. I can put them to sleep. It reminds me of Dexter a little hurt. bit, too. Like, they probably took some inspiration from this a little bit with the with that, you know? In what? The uh, TV show Dexter. Not, oh, not, yeah, not, uh, yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, that's a great moment, of course, in the uh, beginning of the film when he, uh, once again, this is like footage that was in, that's in black and white in the film that's in, uh, that's in color here. I just love this trailer. Martin. Another kind of terror. I would like to be like everyone else. I have to do things that I don't necessarily like to do. But I want to stay alive. I do need blood. Yeah, and though the effects in this, man, like when he slits that woman's uh, arm yeah, and the gnarly. blood splashes on him and the way he like jumps, it's like very sexual it's really disturbing and you know that's what a good movie he good doesn't actually does. you mean he doesn't jump he kind of like shudders yes yeah yeah like it's a director um, of right like he's getting like looking a, for like it's a sexual erotic. thrill right 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 light of the living dead march, 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 march. and the fact that this is like his only form of intimacy is, is i mean it's i mean it's it's it, yeah, it, it's a little it, sympathetic it, there too. Yeah, I mean it's really uh tragic. I love that trailer. It's not a bad tagline either. Watch That's out so for cool. it. Yeah, you want to watch out. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's like, like, watch out for it, right? And it's 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 like, it's, it's coming to coming your way, coming to this theater soon. Um, the uh, tagline that's in the posters is "Watch it with someone you're sure of," right? <laughs> okay, Frankie, so yeah. yeah, Frankie says, "Yeah, and this is this was uh, what what I was going to mention." Uh, and I, on on October 2021, a 16 millimeter print of the black and white director's cut, previously believed to be lost, was located and will undergo restoration. Romero wanted the film in black and white. Uh, years uh, before his uh, his um, his death, Romero said in an interview, "I remember very very vividly saying, yo, there's a three hour black and white cut of Martin out there somewhere.'" If you find it, anybody gets any news about this, hit your boy up. Let me know. <laughs> oh, right. Because he wanted to <laughs> restore it and, you know, and maybe, yeah. you know, give it a limited release or something like that. Because, like I said, this was his favorite movie of, mm. of his own films. This is the movie that he was the most proud of. And uh, he passed away, of course. Um, I mean, he was an old, older cat. It was like 79. I think, mm. but he died from fucking smoking, from fucking lung cancer, which yeah. is, you know, it's like, God damn it, man. It's mm. yeah. This is, this is an old information. You knew that that was going to happen. Yeah. Because he yeah. had, he had quit many, he had quit. I remember seeing, uh, and documented the dead, uh, which is a documentary about Romero. Uh, they mm. were on the set with him on the, uh, on the uh, set of, uh, two evil eyes, the, uh, Poe, 
uh, anthology movie that he made with um, with uh, Dario Argento. Mm, cool. Uh, and he was so he was on the set of, of, of you know Argento did the Black Cat and he did Facts in the Case of M. Valdemar. And so he was there on on the set with a yo yo, and you know, yeah. and, and like, and, and so the direct the uh, director uh, Roy Frumks was like a direct director of the uh, of the documentary was just like was like so what's with the yo yo? It's just like oh yeah, well you know I'm trying to quit smoking, so I'm doing this instead of smoking. Is it working? He's like no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sucks, man. It does. It, it, uh, it, it's a hard it, thing to kick, you know. It, Most people can't, you know. Look, I, I had a 25 year smoking habit. I met, mm. met uh, but I was only smoking maybe about like half a pack a day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Most I don't smoke a pack, you know. Right. And right? so. Like smokers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I vowed to quit when uh, one of my favorite comic book writers, Steve Gerber, uh, uh, died from uh, from smoking. And because it, because when I when that happens, you're just like, God damn it. Like what a stupid way to die, yeah. right? What a preventable way to die, and mm-hmm. it's just like, man, it's like you're depriving the world of your of your talent, and but also it was just like, okay, I'm gonna use this as an impetus. It's just like homeboy didn't die for nothing because right. I'm gonna quit smoking because homeboy died from smoking. Exactly. And my friend Chris, I kept telling him when he was like trying to quit, I was like, do it for George, do it for George, right? So that way you can honestly say it's just like that person did not die in vain. My grandpa, they told him uh, if you if you quit smoking, or you, you only got one year to live. You know, if you quit now, you could live another year. So he quit. He lived ten years. You know, They're pretty good, pretty good genes because you know he was he was a cotton picker and then he worked for General Motors for my other grandpa um, for thirty twenty eight years. You know what I mean? So he li- he got yeah. to enjoy like ten years of his retirement. You know what I mean? So hell yeah. Hell yeah. But some I mean, of those just... people got better genes, though, too, back then. They could live longer and smoke more, it seems like. Yeah, like that Burgess Meredith character in Grumpy Old Men. I eat bacon for <laughs> breakfast every morning. I smoke nothing. There's nothing wrong. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Fucking, fucking William S. Burroughs. William on, S. Right. Burroughs lived to be like in, like well into his 80s. And he was like smoking camel unfiltered cigarettes. Humps. Like 15 years old. And slamming yeah. heroin, too. <laughs> Damn. Sorry. So some people. Look, He's like the heroin keeps the lung cancer away. Right. Look, look. Some people are indestructible. Yeah. No. For reals. Yeah. Keith Richards. Most people low. aren't though. Yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. people aren't though. Some yeah, people are indestructible. Aren't. Yeah. Uh, when Gigi Allen died, I think everybody was just shocked because it was just like at a certain point you thought that guy was just like the Terminator. Bacterial, <laughs> let me guess. A bacterial infection from fecal matter. No. Nah, no. Nah, uh, uh, no. He died like a rock star. He just OD'd. Oh, okay. Mm. Like regular old boring OD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody expected him to like go up like fucking Donald Duck at the end of that uh of that uh cartoon where he like puts on a devil costume and pours the uh Daffy the Duck. I swear Daffy you Duck. guys. Did I say Donald? <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, I go, it's it's like, yeah, that. the trick is you can only that. do it once. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like that's how everybody <laughs> thought Gigi Allen was gonna die. Instead, he died on the he OD'd on the floor of like Johnny Puke's apartment, like literally like uh, like four blocks from 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 uh, from where I was. And it was damn. just like, dude, fucking died like a rock star. Oh, you know? that sucks. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. No, it's you know, it's just you know, it's just like take care of yourselves, people. And it's just like when it comes to smoking, now here I go. Oh shit, I'm gonna do a sermon. It's a stupid way to die. I, you can't convince people to stop smoking. It has to be their idea. Yeah, it has to be them. Yeah, it has 100%. to be their idea. They have to yeah. just be at that point where they're like, you know what? I'm done. I think yeah. I'm done. And uh, now, <laughs> oh, it's sure. I mean, I used to easier smoke. Easier than ever. Say that the um, it was the the laziness really it was the thing. Like you'd run out of cigarettes. And then, well, what do you got to do? You got to get in the car. Uh, you got to drive somewhere to walk somewhere to go get another pack. And I'm like, ugh. Just, to buy the death stick. And also think of all ass. the pornography that you can be buying instead. Yes. That's well, exactly. You know what? I wasn't going to go there with it. Good. But you're right. Or comics. <laughs> or yeah, art so supplies. Comics. Comics. Right. Comics. comics. Right. 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 Because that's the other thing. It's a shit so fucking expensive. Spend your money on on something uh, cooler. Well, it is. I mean, you're you're spending thousands of dollars. And when I quit, it they were only five dollars a pack. Now they're like ten, probably. Yeah, just it's it is stupid financially and 
physi right. a lot or physically right. And, right and and also and i and i gotta say probably wouldn't have been able to do it without without these fucking things without the fucking uh the vapey vape because that made it uh so much easier uh yeah, anyway you can like step yourself down and but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so anyway this the 16 millimeter black and white print of um of martin is out there uh where did they find it in romero's vaults oh wow. he had it he had it the whole time damn huh. so here's the thing it's the same place where they found the amusement park oh okay so they're finding other shit what i'm praying hoping for is a three four five nine hour version of fucking dawn of the dead because that <laughs> yeah. movie could never be long enough for me right that movie's pretty hope, fucking epic dude super epic and yeah. i'm just so i'm just hoping we're <laughs> gonna get more dawn of the dead because that that i could never get enough of that movie could never be long enough uh yeah. when when i heard that they discovered this version of martin I was thinking like, oh shit! I remember saying to my to my homeboy Chris, I was like, dude, we're gonna be fucking watching that at the fucking Alamo, at the Alamo Draft House. They're gonna be <laughs> showing that shit for sure. And then the fucking lockdown happened and all that shit. Uh, so it still hasn't been released. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they're sitting on it. I don't know what the dealio is there. Get that shit out there uh, soon please <laughs> it might be like a definitive uh, uh um reason of exactly what he is probably not he probably left it more open to interpretation ambiguous but there might be more like there might be more to to figure out is is he a fucking vampire or is he just you know um a serial rapist killer you know so yep yep uh so yeah he moves in with his uh with his cousin kuda and he just lets him know <laughs> Uh, first yeah, right. I will save your soul, <laughs> then I will destroy you. Oh, by the way, you start, yeah, by the way, I, you <laughs> right? start, you start working at my store tomorrow. Yeah. And he's Go going, to bed. Yeah. And he's going to talk to her. <laughs> right. You would, right. You would, you will not, you will not, you will, you will not talk to my daughter, but uh, to my granddaughter. Uh, but she, but, she, but she, I've told her not to speak to you, but she will anyway. <laughs> it's funny too, man. Like, uh, at the end, you know what I mean? He just, well, I don't want to spoil it, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like. Uh, it's been out it's, long enough. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's. Uh, right. Like he tells him, he's just like, you can come and go, but don't take anybody from the city. If I hear of it, even just once, I'm going to fucking like destroy you without salvation. Yeah, yeah. And the, yes, that comes into play at the end of the film. And when he when he when he when he when he puts it to him, like that shit looks pretty brutal, like real, like you know what I mean, like oh, the first sound effects and effects. the prop and everything, you know what I mean? It's yes. so good. It's one, yeah, it's one, it's one of uh, Savini's uh, finest moments because that makes you just, and it's so unexpected too. I yeah. mean, when you watch the movie uh, over again, when you've when you've already seen the film, yeah, you see like you sort of see it coming, pace wise, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But when you first watch this movie, you're just like, no, nah, what the fuck? Like, yeah, you're like, you don't think he's got, he's like, I'm fucking with you. It's like when you're like, you see like those people like fucking with the uh, the old people like on the bus, like that Vince Vega, you know what I mean? Yeah. He gets yeah. up on the bus. He's like, don't make me get up. I'm going to get up. And he gets up and he fucking beats the yeah. fuck out of that dude on the bus. Hey, you know what I mean? And they make a fucking trilogy of movies out of it starring Danny Trejo, you know? Same thing with this. <laughs> you know, he, he's yep. like, I'm telling you, dude, I'm going to fuck you up. Don't do that. And he's still, I'm telling you, you know, and he's going, he's meeting with the, with the hip priest and, you know, uh, meeting with other priests, you know, that, that got his back. Yeah. And it's, it's like a slow build, you know, and where you're just kind of like, uh, he ain't gonna do nothing, you know? Well, because this is such a moody bluesy movie. It's, it's, it's really sad. It's a sad, it's a sad little horror movie is what it is. And I am a sucker for sad little horror movies because that was like kind of like a sub genre in like the 1970s and i always just had a soft spot in my heart for uh for movies like this that just felt very bluesy and then yeah. of course you know he meets the uh the um the housewife who's just like your classic bored house passionless housewife who's just leaving like this kind of bleak existence or at least bleak for her right it's not like you know she's homeless or on the street but she's just uh Right, and she says like she's just completely uh, dissatisfied. Right, yeah. And she talks to Martin because he just sits there and just listens to her, and never talks back. And uh, 
you know, he ends up starting a relationship with her. And, uh, oh yeah, here's Kuda going through like the, the family album and, uh, you know, uh, and we're supposed to glean from that, that there's just something wrong with this kid or that there's something wrong with this family, that there is what, right. Because if there's hereditary mental illness and here's the thing, mental illness is hereditary, right? Okay. You have to have a genetic predisposition. Like for what I've got, which me, is I'm like, always, I'm always on the lookout for more things I can blame on my parents. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing too. It's like, like when you let your parents know, Oh yeah, the shit's hereditary. They're like, wouldn't me, wouldn't me, wouldn't from my, from my side of the family. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, I looked at my father. I'm like, Oh, that's where my brother gets his mean streak. Right. And I yeah. looked at my mother. I'm like, that's where I get the anxiety. Right. <laughs> so that is, that is just, uh, because, because that, that's the current having worked in, in the, uh, in the mental health care field, but it's like the current, theory is that it's a combination of uh, three things, genetics, childhood trauma, and the third is personality, which I find really interesting. So uh, not everybody who has the genetic predisposition is going to end up with it. It's just you need those other two factors and then it just it increases the probability. Right, right, yeah. right. And so you know, what I have, which is like a mood disorder, it sucks, it's horrible, it can be hellish, it's still not something like schizophrenia. Right. Right? Because so you can say that at least I'm not... Out of touch with reality. <laughs> right. Right? Uh, uh, what people like me have, it's an illness of perception. That is to say, uh, you know, it's just, you know, the way that you're kind of weighing the importance of things, Right. Uh, okay. As opposed to like you know hearing voices, and yeah. not knowing, uh, not being able to distinguish uh, reality from fantasy. Uh, no, oh, there was a to. meme my my wife had found a while ago that she she said it, it uh, described her fairly accurately, and it was a anxiety woman able to leap to the worst conclusion in a single yes. bound. <laughs> right? Yes, that's what I mean by illness of perception. Absolutely. Always. Boom. Worst right. Case well, like for a, even like, you know, tonight, our daughter just learned to uh, she just got her license to junior license. Oh, nice. So she okay. can't be out past 11. It makes it a little bit easier when it comes time to like take her to work. She can just, you know, use the car. But now I'm like watching her zip past the house. And I'm like, I saw that you need to stop. That's not your car. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But she's yeah, going yeah. she's she's going to uh, um a party with uh, some, a, a birthday party with some of like friends from her drama class. And, yeah. you know, it's in a part of Washington where I would not prefer to go, but you know, she's going to be around other, you know, kids and adults and stuff. So. Right. As long as you know, she knows, on she, one, knows she's safe. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, this is the, the, you know, the, the kind of, it's like, it, it's like dumping all the Plinko pucks in the game of Plinko at the same time. And you're trying to like do this multiplication tree of decision-making on whether or not she should go to this party or not. I'm just listening to my wife in the, in the passenger seat fighting with her, knowing that it's probably her that is, that is anxious. She doesn't need to be, you know, that everything, the probability that everything will turn out fine, or should we just take her and pick her up? Or should we just tell her not to go and, you know, me, I'm just turning the volume up on the radio, turning it back down again once you start talking. <laughs> but you're par yeah, but you're also parents, right? So parents right. are parents, of course. I mean, but you see, I'm not a parent, so I don't fully understand. Well, there is that. I mean, yeah, you worry about your kids, but you don't want them growing up being scared of every little thing either. Right, right, yeah. right. Exactly. Uh, you want to find like a, a balance, right? You want them to, well, not, yeah, to you not want be them stupid. To be, right. You want them to be able to find their balance. Exactly. Right. right. You want them to not be stupid, but meanwhile, they're still at that age where their job is kind of like to do stupid shit. Safety third. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because, right. you know, it's just like, I mean, like, what did you know about anything at that age? Dude, that was unstoppable. Look, <laughs> it started with bicycle helmets, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, right, right, and then right. it became um, a trophy for everyone. Um, stupid right. is supposed to hurt. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. how you fucking learn things. Yeah. Stupid is supposed to hurt. Jeez, man, if you warn everybody about everything, man, when they really run into something, they ain't gonna know how to how to deal with it because no, they'll true. be adults and they'll have never faced it as a kid. Quit putting warning labels on stuff. Lead the paint. Come on, man. <laughs> I seriously, that last one, seriously, please can we put lead back in the paint? <laughs> seriously, man. Like, I mean, honest to God, like pinstriping paint was so much better when it had lead in it. <laughs> and what was it? There was no like rash of children climbing to the top of a signpost so that they could lick a sign. Right. It right. lasted longer. It painted out smoother. It just, yeah, whatever. The good stuff is still, everybody says that. Like you'll, you'll, you'll be at some, I'm going off the rails again, but no, fine. you'll be good. in a group of like other pinstripers and somebody will say they found a can of old one shot that still has lead in it. And it's like every, it's like now everybody is grouping around this one person and they're and they're listening to them tell what it's like as if it was like they're the first person in your class to ever see or touch a boob <laughs> that's amazing yeah it's funny oh yeah nice put the lead man. back in the paint man for oh, real christ man pops has got he's 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 bullseye but yeah this sequence to me is is the highlight of the film <laughs> and you see how careful he is about picking his victims right how he goes to this woman's house and he just pretends like to be deaf you know a beggar basically yeah and so they give him money to go away and so he gets a look in the house he sees like okay she's with a guy right so he waits for the guy to leave and so uh oh yeah that's right he originally finds the uh the uh he's just like hanging out behind her right it's like it's a great shot too because mm -hmm. her head is in the shot and then her, she leans down to sign a check and his and, and he's and he's just there. It's a really great, clever reveal and that's how he gets her address. And so then he's like hanging out outside the house, uh, not looking suspicious because he waits for the uh, ice cream man mm -hmm. to uh, swing by. And so uh, then he does this little stunt here. Where he can, you know, get a little look in the house and everything, do 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 some recon, and uh, he ends up. Uh, oh yeah, that's really great with his shadow falling across the uh, the door, and so in his mind he's seeing it as this sort of like romantic vampire yeah. film, and uh, open sesame. He opens the door with uh, by buying a uh, similar model door opener at a. Uh, at a local store and right. And so like you see the, uh, the garage door uh, opening and it's like him entering through like a window and you know, his Martin. victims are always happy to see him. Hi, and Martin. He's got, he's, and he's got his kit all fucking set up. I think and it's genius that he walks into the place and is surprised by somebody else there because typically that's not what happens in these situations in these movies. No, because he planned everything so perfectly. No, but any time you have a scene like this in any yes. other movie, there's never an oops like right. that. Never. But I hate I hate to do it, but I, I have to I have to bail out of here early. No, it's okay. But I'm glad I got a chance to hang out, with you guys dude. again. Yeah. But it was. You, it was a good man. movie. I don't know what the next one's going to be, but I'll, I'll I'll keep paying attention and stuff. But all gotta... right, and and I will try to announce it like not like at the last fucking minute, like the way I did I did with uh with this with this one. All right. When does Pops but, pick one? Well, uh, well, uh, I don't know. Well, I, well, Pops uh, picked a uh like a Giallo, but it was just uh, so I was just like, well, that's not really a horror movie, but so I picked mm -hmm. one. That's why I picked uh. Uh, yeah, uh, right. Oh, and Pops picked yeah. uh, Last House on the Left. Oh, he did. Oh, I missed that one. All right. All that right. was a yeah. long time ago, though. That was. Yeah. All right. You can still pick one. another one. You can, you can still pick one. And um, uh, we're always open. We're always open to uh, to suggestions too. And uh, you know how it how it, sure. how it goes. Sure. Sure. Well, I'll throw one out there. Maybe see what you guys think. But right. um, good to see you guys right. again. All right. Good Thank to you, see you too, man. Right. Be good. Peace man. Out. Yeah, Be well. See ya. Peace. And but yeah, he just like breaks and barges in, and this dude's there, <laughs> right? And he's just like, "Who are you?" And the dude's just like, "Yo, yo, yo!" It's just like no reason to get upset or anything, right? Because he thinks <laughs> right. that that he is like her husband. Yeah, right. yeah. 
Yeah. Right. And then she's like, wait a second. I don't know this guy. <laughs> and that's really fucking scary. Yeah. And it's just like, what? Yeah, and before the, he can react, really Martin just jumps in and just boom, hits him with the fucking hypodermic needle full of the uh, tranquilizer. Yeah. And you're going to know me now. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and so he's just been shot full of something. He doesn't know what the fuck it is. And he's, he's like, you got to call the police and ambulance something. She's like, no, people can't know you're here. And he's like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm I just been shot full of something. I don't know what the fuck it is. Right. And then there becomes this ca- game of fucking cat and mouse where he's running through the house and, uh, you know, like he uh, uh, grabs a phone that's downstairs so that they can't call call out, and he's just like, you know, whenever they try calling, he's going beep, 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 beep. all right, right, starts dialing, just to like uh, make them think that there's something wrong, and then finally this guy figures out like, oh shit, there's a there, there's another uh, phone in the house. Then Martin gets them locked outside of the house. The editing of this scene is absolutely masterful, and that's one of the things that was interesting about taking screenshots for this was. It was really difficult because everything is moving so fucking fast. Yeah. A lot of, sh- lot, of, lot, of lot of cuts. A lot of cuts. And uh, just a really, really effective, uh, super duper su- suspenseful scene. And then when he finally has both of them doped up he, and he drags this guy's body out into the woods, he's like pissed off at him. He's like, why were you there? You weren't supposed to be there, God damn it. And it's the first time we see him actually being uh, the closest we see to him being sadistic, yeah. where he just like drives this uh, this wooden stick into his throat and just starts grinding with it. Mm. And it's once again, Savini's effects, man, really fucking gruesome. So, you know, he ends up drinking this guy's blood and instead of the woman, instead of the woman's. And uh, yeah, uh, let me get to another yeah so then he takes advantage of her in her sleep but then he ends up cleaning up he's even like picking up candy a bowl of candy that fell over he screws back in the light bulb it's uh it's a really effective scene uh got another clip here of uh of actually our director uh (laughs) Arrow. It was very difficult finding clips for this because, like I said, when I looked for clips, it was all my in, my in. <laughs> it's all the fucking uh, Martin Martin Lawrence shit. But yeah, so well, uh, Kuda, uh, his cousin, is is just like he wakes him up one morning and it's just like, like, like motherfucker, va- you know, Nosferatu vamp- vampire. <laughs> Like, we're a Catholic family, damn it. Like, get up. We're going to fucking, you know, we're going to church. It's right. Sunday, motherfucker. <laughs> and uh, the uh, church, which is which had a, a fi- been gutted by a fire, turns out that the uh, new there's a new priest there, and he's, like, young and hip. He clearly likes getting his drink on. Smoke on. And he's smoking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um a lot of people think that Romero was sort of com- commenting on his own uh, addictions or his own uh, kind of addictive uh, behavior, right? Mm. Because uh, he was somebody who kind of had an addictive personality the same way that um, that Stephen King did. And mm. a lot of people, I mean, I always thought that this is his most personal movie and that he was kind of like, I don't know, uh, exposing part of his own soul in this film uh, in a way that you don't necessarily see in uh, a lot of his other movies. But yeah, here's a little uh, here's a little clip of uh, George Romero, the actor. Oh, and I should mention uh, Christine Forrest, who plays uh, who plays uh, this young lady right here. Um, um, Martin's uh, uh, I don't know what she would be, like grand niece or something like that. Who knows? That's some weird fucking cousin. Right, right, right. Uh, Christine Forrest is uh, also known as Christine Romero. They met each other in uh, in uh, college, actually, and ended up uh, getting married. Crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Father Curley was in Braddock 42. No, 43 years before he left. No, thank you. I'd like to have a little more wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, no, I'm not ready for the coffee. More booze, please. You like this wine? Gorinskas made this wine. I like it, too. Gorinskas? I don't know him. Is he Catholic? A good Catholic, yes, Father Howard. But you would know him. He left even before Corelli. It's too bad I would have commissioned him to make some wine for the church. I don't suppose it's sacrilege to say that the wine at St. Vincent's is putrid. That's as bad. <laughs> putrid. You were sent here or you asked to come? I was sent by the diocese when Father Corelli retired. Retired? Huh. Father Corelli is younger than I am. He asked to leave. He left, like the rest of them. They think Right, because this is a town, and you see that. Um, I should have pointed that pointed that out earlier. When you see Martin arrive in the town, you can tell that this is a very depressed place. That mm. this is a uh, a community in decline. I think this town is finished. No, he has cancer. He's very near the end. In fact, I haven't heard he may be gone. <laughs> Yeah, Kuda's just like that motherfucker. He just abandoned us. He's like, uh, no, he's like, yeah, uh, like he's got cancer. And so, this is always an in in an interesting notion: the idea of the modern Catholic Church not believing in the supernatural. You know the things an old person wants from a priest. Oh, this is very sweet. An old person. He's more interested in the. He's more interested in the booze. Well, in the way he puts the food in his mouth and does like the the Father, the Son, the he Holy Spirit, himself. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, he must be pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, it's a very comic performance, actually. A priest yeah, it is. Who thinks the way the old person thinks? A priest who believes in the old ways. That's why I use the Latin Mass here in Braddock. I think people around here. Do you believe in demons, Father Howard? Do you believe the devil? can enter a person's soul? <laughs> I don't know what to believe about that. You don't know, Father Howard? <laughs> you see, this is what I mean. This is not what an old person wants to hear from a priest. Uh, Father Howard, would you like some more cookies? No, thanks. Can... No, I'll take more booze, though. Can I get you anything else? <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. If our priests cannot save us from such things, who can, Father Howard? Right, and so he ends up recommending a uh, a more traditional priest. Deal. You know, he went to see that film, The Exorcist. He said they did it all wrong. Zulimas. I don't suppose you saw that movie. I thought it was great. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's Pretty good performance, like... huh? Oh, it's a, oh, yeah, no, it's an excellent, it's, it's a, uh, it's an excellent performance. <laughs> I thought he was pretty funny, like, watching yeah. the movie. Like, it was a good little uh, comedic break, and I was like, dude, I, th I think that's Romero, you know? And yeah, I, sure. I hadn't never, to be honest, I'd never seen him that young before, because I yeah. had just known him as, you know, with the ponytail and the big glasses and the, the white hair. Yeah, and yeah, beard, yeah. You know? Like, that yeah, looks like, yeah. That, yeah, that's him, that's gotta be him, you know? Yeah, yeah, George, rest in peace, George. Yeah. I mean, one of the, I mean, in my opinion, one of the great American filmmakers, one of the great American yeah. directors. I think a lot uh, of people would agree with you too. You know, like, um, yeah, like even like for different reasons, like uh, Night of the Living Dead and then like Dawn of the Dead, they were just so big, like on different social political levels, you know? Yes. Uh, at the time. It's and so influential. So many different things, oh my like, God. Know, so. And the thing is, yeah. it's like his movies, like, it's like you want to see how to do like put political content in your movies the or, or, or right. comics or anything yeah. the right way yeah that was how not like right? all this rubbish right now yeah yeah but where they're taking where it's like they're taking the subtext and making it the text exactly right and that was one of the things that uh, that uh, problems i had with land of the dead that was sort of also kind of making it a little too obvious in terms of like oh well this is the message this is the, <laughs> yeah. this is the social commentary right it's like uh, yeah. no you want that shit to be there where you'll notice it if you're looking for it, or you'll notice it if you're particularly perceptive. It's like when I was a kid, I remember watching uh, Planet of the Apes, right? Yeah. And just thinking like, oh, this is just an awesome sci-fi adventure movie. Right. Which it, which it is. And then I watched it again when I was like in my teens. And I was like, wait a second. This is, this is all about racism, right? Which it is. Uh, it's more obvious in the novel than it is in the movie, but it's still pretty obvious in the movie. And then I'm watching ba Battle for the, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. 
And there's a scene in that where like the gorillas want to go to war and the chimps are like, no, 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 peace, peace, peace. And they're like protesting in the streets. I'm like, oh shit, this is about Vietnam mm. and the Vietnam protests. Right. Mm, right. But if you don't notice that shit, that's fine because the story is still there. Right. Right. Nowadays, they just fucking beat you over the head with that shit and they don't even care. About if television. there's a story to go along with it. Exactly. It's just the politics. It's the politics. It's backwards. Ass backwards, man. Ass backwards. Because your first a guy like Romero, for instance, understood what's your first what's your first job? Fucking entertaining people. Yeah. Fans, first and please, foremost, entertain you. Make fans laugh, make fans Absolutely. cry, make fans happy, happy, happy. Maybe happy, you'll come back happy. for a couple more movies, you know, if if I'm lucky, you know. Right. And uh, you know, for my money, Martin is the movie that really established him as like a guy that was gonna uh, be around. Yeah, right. Because, because of he, right, right. Because he was sort of struggling to find his way as a filmmaker a little bit after yeah. *The Living Dead*. You know, right. he did *The Crazies*, which is great, but it's very much in zombie the land zombie mode. Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, he did Jack's Wife, which is actually like a feminist horror movie. Mm, I uh, seen and that. It's also known as Season of the Witch. Uh, oh. That's yeah, uh, you can yeah, it, it's on Tubi, mm. uh, and that's good, but it's minor. Mm -hmm. uh, he did a movie about advertising called There's Always Vanilla, and that's I think I've heard of that one. Yeah, it's yeah, I can't say it's really I can't really say it's worth watching. He directed a documentary about. O.J. Simpson. <laughs> oh, right? Because cool. he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? No, he was with the Buffalo Bills. Oh, mm. okay. All right. Juice. Yeah, I, I don't get yeah, 49ers juice. after yes. that. Yes. Yes, and the name of the documentary, The Juice is Loose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Still, Did that still... come out right after he got out of jail? What? <laughs> no, right? <laughs> no, this the, is a... The, I the had O.J. An Pogs? an action figure, dude. I had OJ Pogs, like guilty, not guilty. Like you flip them. Cause I was playing with Pogs. <laughs> and he's like this. Behind like bars. On both sides. I think so. Yeah. Guilty, not guilty. Yeah. I, oh I can my God. I remember the day that my, that my OJ Simpson rookie card plummeted in value. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. Oh my God. I, I, I mean, that's crazy when I think about it. I had an OJ Simpson action figure. Like uh, like a doll. Mm -hmm. I remember too because like starting I would lineup. always break all my uh, break all my toys. So was like I, I pulled lineup, his arms. Graham? It was all hollow. Like it was very poorly made. Right. It's like the right. limbs weren't solid. It was like yeah. Was it made by starting lineup? I have no idea. What kind of gloves did it come with? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And the butcher knife. The, the, the little little add a little button in the back. You just like no, push that's it like the this. Bruno Draw black gloves. <laughs> No, that's the Bruno OJ. You that that was right. that was the 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 catch. That was the uh, one out of, one in a hundred. You only got <laughs> man. That's crazy. Like this coming home from school, like this, like <sighs> fuck, man. I hate and you know Barbie's on Broncos. I just, just turn on TV, TV like for like forever. <laughs> that that, yeah, that trial was just on every day. Yeah, it I was sure like, was. Fuck this stupid shit. Like I was so yeah. mad when I was a kid. It's like ah, oh, what's on? I went. I wanted to watch other shit. That know? chase was fun though. That chase yeah, was, was fun. Yeah, but. <laughs> I, I, I'm still kidding. Still, though, there's a part of me, man, that like I understand why nobody's done it because they would catch mad crazy hell. I'm fucking uh, probably going to hell because I'm thinking like if I had mad crazy money, I would love like fuck you money. I would love to bankroll a fucking horror franchise with fucking OJ. What? <laughs> the slasher franchise, like a franchise. Oh, oh right? yeah. <laughs> OJ's back. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's, no, a, no. it's a slasher movie have, franchise with OJ. To oh, yeah, totally. name, dude. You don't even have to use his name. Um, 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 let's see. Uh, furious football murderer. <laughs> the juice is, I, I like the Jesus Luke. Pickle and Einhorn. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is crazy. Oh, my God, man. But yeah, I mean, uh, Romero, uh, you know, then of course, uh, Dario Argento came calling. Was like, "Hey, I give you, a, I give you a two million dollars to make a new zombie movie." And then, of course, that's when Dawn of the Dead happened, and that's of course what completely. That's the masterpiece, me. That's like the... for me. That's like the masterpiece. You know, it's like that's probably my favorite zombie movie. You know what I mean? It always oh, kind of comes back to it. It's not even close. It's not even close. It's not even close. 
I mean, to, for for me, that's like a movie I could never get sick of, and I and like I said, it could never be long enough. Have you seen the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, extended ball hours version? No. Uh-uh. no. no. It's on YouTube. Bam. Yeah, oh, man. dude, dude. I uh, when I was driving a U-Haul truck for uh for for my friend recently, I got behind the wheel. Bam. <laughs> that's goblin yeah. right yeah that goblin? that's yeah. yeah that's probably my favorite movie oh, of Donna all time Dead? yeah yeah i remember like I, seeing that like being like fuck this that's pretty that's crazy the you know best. that's the best yeah. fuck i love that movie but yeah um you know romero one of the great american directors uh never got the uh love that he deserved from the mainstream but uh Creed but he got Tarant- it from the fans but he got it from yeah. the fans yeah, and no. he was around to get the love and that's why it's important it's just like remember you know these people they're not we're not going to have them forever we saw this also you know especially in comics you know we lost a bunch of fucking visionaries right uh, just yeah. recently neil adams george perez yeah. Len wine a lot of these dudes bernie. It's like we're not bernie fuck yeah you know we're not gonna have these people forever give them a fucking love and the respect that they deserve while they're here because a lot of dudes you know rest there's a lot yeah. of wrestlers out there they're oh, kind of God. on their last leg hulk hogan oh, dude. a lot of people hate him i like hulk hogan he, he like i loved hogan when i was a kid i'm a know? hollywood man yeah i like him more you know yeah yeah he's a little more badass yeah oh my nwo white <laughs> let me tell you something brother yeah, yeah, because I hated him as a face. He's I hated working out now face. too. He's like posting up on Twitter like two days ago. Someone, one, someone I follow because most people just follow me and I follow him back. And he's like, "Oh, bro, like put in the work." Like he's still working out. <laughs> he's still got like his <laughs> traps are all fucking swollen up, popping. You know, you know, he's like pasta mania. Yeah, Remember pasta mania. Oh my oh. god, man! I was watching uh, Mr. Nanny, dude. There's like a couple scenes in there. That, I mean, it's it's like a cartoon movie, you know. It's it's yeah, like yeah. Mrs. Doubtfire and Home Alone put together, probably yeah, before yeah. both of them. Mr. But, Mom, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's pretty funny. It's stupid. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, look. Uh, well, with wrestlers, it's just especially terrible because you're just so used to them just... Yeah, right. Dropping, dropping dead, <laughs> which is fucking, you know, horrible and tragic, which is why when I hear about some of these guys retiring at like 40 or something, I'm like, good. Yeah, good. Get out of there right, and stop good. stressing, you know? Like, yeah. take it easy on your heart and... Yeah, yeah, because you uh, know, it's once again, it's just like you know, like it got with ECW, like in the uh, late nineties. It was just like, look, the shit's entertaining as hell, but don't fucking kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you could budget a they little more. That shit too far. <laughs> the shit they do, some of the shit they do now is is pretty much. I mean, when Jeff Hardy climbs up on a scaffold and jumps yeah. off and onto yeah, some yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. you know, it's like yeah, yeah, lands yeah. on his back all fucking on the table, time. yeah, and you know, he does the swan tom down onto the yeah. dude on right. the table from 20 yeah. feet up. Right. That's fucking crazy. But it that's is. what Sabu used to do. He'd crawl up on the Sabu doorway. A, oh, He'd yeah. crawl up above the archway of the, of the arena where people come into the arena and yeah. he'd jump off on people, right? <laughs> you know, it's New Jack, oh my god, well, New Jack they're was the craziest doing, of them all. I mean, all. they're doing the same shit now, but it's like mainstream. I, yeah, I know. You know. Well, that's because also it's just the the talent level of the wrestlers. Like yeah. I said, I I, I, I'll, I I maintain that the current crop of of wrestlers, the current generation of wrestlers, most talented ever. Most talented Dude, they're, ever. They're they're crazy, crazy athletic. Every one of them can do flips out of the ring, and, yeah, and right. And they've all gotten really good at catching each other, so they don't really get uh, fucked up, right? That's yeah. the art. Take, I know they're, they're in the it way together now. The more the art. They don't get out of the way; they yeah. get in the way. They take yeah. the hit, so yes. dude, don't hit splat on the ground, yes. right? Because right. that's the mm. art. That's the yeah. art yeah. is being able to the do this shit without killing each other. Yes. Yeah. It's, How long can you, you survive? You gotta sell both sides of it, right? But right. every one of them now can just even the great big dudes are diving out of the freaking ring, dude. All of them, right? And that's what's so frustrating is that wrestling sucked worse than it's ever sucked because all these because well, the storylines the, the story story talent yeah. is great, and they're just like sitting there with their thumbs up their asses yeah, because they're yeah. not allowed the, to fucking do anything. The yeah. storylines suck, 
There's Carl. very few that are good on the mic now, but they're all yeah. fucking crazy, fucking talented as far as yes. athleticism. And ring and, ability. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking insane, man. It's fucking insane. So, folks, uh, I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, uh, tune out. We're gonna we're gonna call calls it quits. Uh, tonight's movie is, uh, of course, Martin. Go check that out uh, if this sounds like something that you want to see. And trust me, you do want to see. Oh well, shit. First of all, I just gotta ask Matt, of course, for your general uh, general uh, 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 impressions of the film. Capsule review. Uh, I thought it was awesome, man. It was it was awesome on a lot of levels. You know, I, I thought it was very original. Uh, it had a very like, um, I, I, I hate to say the word street, but I mean suburban street, realistic like uh, camera approach to it. Independent. You know what I mean? It's cool seeing 16 like millimeter. Yeah. yeah, it's cool seeing like uh, Romero's like you know favorite film uh, again something uh, uh, new and, and interesting and innovative for the whole vampire genre. Haven't yeah, really man. seen anything like that before. So yeah, definitely, man. I give it two horns up. It's cool seeing uh, Savini in there too. Um, With this yeah, old it was, nose, it's a cool, it a cool movie, and I'd like to check out the the uh, the three hour cut. And uh, yeah, it was it was creepy, dude. It's pretty um, pretty scary. Yeah, I uh, psycho know, killer stuff is always like for me always really scary because it's like that's the dude next door, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that's what's uh, you know, what I thought was funny about the tagline: "Watch it with somebody you're sure of." Yeah, you're sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> won't stab you with the needle. <laughs> right, right. So, 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 Matt, uh, t- tell these fools where they can find you and your and your dope ass comics. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, if you guys want, you can find me at uh, Metal Movies and Brewskies. That's my YouTube channel where. Talk about metal movies, brewskis, uh, comics. Sometimes I do shows where I have people on. Uh, if you guys uh, want to hit me up on Twitter, um, I'm at Runecutter Comic. And if you guys want to check out my book, Butch Cleaver, uh, that's it right there. That's uh, butchcleaver.com. Um, I have the first and second graphic novels up. It's about a butcher who gets killed and he's resurrected by a voodoo curse. And that curse gives him the power to control bone. And in the first uh, issue, he's got a bounty hunter on his ass. And the second one, Picks right up from there, and uh, you go into his origin a little bit, and he kind of un- unravels the story about what happened to him and what's going to happen in book three one day. So, thank you. Appreciate it. You got it, man. You got it. And and and, and folks, definitely definitely check that check that out. It is a hell of a lot of fun. And if you're a horror fan, you're, you're going to get a kick out of it. Uh, Pops, tell these people where they can find you. I mean, first, I'm going to tell you what I thought of your little movie. Oh, you've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a shocker. You actually well, you actually watched, you actually saw the movie. I, I get to see some of them. I just don't have that much time. This That's this okay. one is one that I actually remember seeing because it was like it was the weirdest vampire movie I'd ever seen. Yeah, right. right. It's definitely, Plain yeah. and simple, the weirdest vampire movie I'd ever seen. You know, um, I did get like some good laughs out of it too. Like when when he walked into the house and the dude was there, wasn't supposed to be there, and freaked out. You know, so. Um, it, it took me through the whole, you know, what I want out of a horror movie. I want to laugh and I want to be a little you. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little disturbed, a little disturbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disturbed yeah, yeah, yeah. is the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and this is a disturbing movie for sure. Got to have the laughs, you know, you got to have that palate cleanser in, in the movie. That's what all, I'm saying. All, I think comedy needs to be in everything too. You know what I mean? Like, me too. A little bit. I do. And oh, yeah, it's yeah, gonna, yeah. It's gonna Shakespeare help understood that. And everything you write, it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna help a little bit because you have to have, you know, you have to have a little break. You know what I mean? It'd be Especially like having a song with a blast really beat all the way through, shit. or just the same, the same beat all the way through in any style of song, any genre. It's fucking annoying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or the same, yeah. the same panel in every comic book. Like, dude, you know? Yep. So, yep. Yeah, yep. Got a palate cleanse. Learn that shit. Learn I'm that. Just shit. Born with the volume down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, man. You know, I, I learned learned that shit from Shakespeare. You know, there's always a comic, always a comic relief in there. The Grave Diggers and Hamlet, for instance. All I'm watching shit. some Shakespeare well, right now. I'm watching Deadwood right now. Season. I'm about to finish oh, that. Oh. I'll be straight up. Very I'm, like, I'm about to <laughs> oh, be. Oh yeah. Straight, I'm Everywhere about to be there. 60 years old, and I've spent my whole life trying to have a good time. Yeah, man. I it's mean, a, you know, if, you quit, if something quits being fun, I'm out. I'm done. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm on to the next thing because I'm going to have some good time. We ain't here that long. 
when you're That's laying in, what, what if you have to lay in that bed for the last hour of your life, knowing you're on your way out, are you going to be able to look back and go, yeah, you book the time, yo, take me. Or are you going to be like, I wish I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. True. You know? Yep. Hey, That's true. Even, even at my worst, yeah. I'm a survivor, man. Fuck that shit. I'm going to have a good man. time. Hell, man. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Oh, yep. Dude. Yeah, because God didn't put us on this planet to be fucking miserable. That's why. Dude, well, look, I mean, you know, you guys know I'm not having the best of situation right now, but that doesn't stop me, me from coming out here having a good time with my friends and trying to make the best of it no matter what. Shit, I spent six years in prison. I played poker every night. I fucking, I made the best of it. I didn't have, you don't have, sometimes you don't have a choice and you just got to make the best of it. Yes. So, you know, um, Amen, this Pops. is the way I've always lived. I'm 60 years old. I ain't looking at, you know, I mean, my future don't look real bright right now, but I'm still going to make the best of it. You have to, dude. You have to. You always, know? always. That's a spirit, man. That's a, sp that's a spirit. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We really do oh, appreciate you. Did, did I explain the, what? No, you know, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. All right. First, it's it's a comic book from one of the first people that I hung out, you know, that I met online that did comic books. OK, um, but secondly, we 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 gave it a euphemism thing right here. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to love yourself. Get ugly. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? And that's not always yourself, fucking people. easy. That's not the, that's one of the that, one of the hardest things uh, you know the, in in my life was learn was learning that. But once once you do, but it's difficult to love other people if you don't love yourself, dude. You got to love yourself. You got to you, you got yeah, to be your own, love be your yourself, own best. What you're doing and how you feel, and what you're about, change something. Yes, yes, hell yes, hell yes. <laughs> and there's nothing narcissistic about it either. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just uh, it, it's. Uh, it makes it, it makes it makes you more effective at loving on other people and uh, do the thing you. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, All right, Brian, do Pop not end yes. the broadcast, please. I'm not gonna end the broadcast. You're gonna end the broadcast. You did last week, didn't you, Brian? Did I? <laughs> no, I, did. I thought I clicked. I thought I just closed the browser. Can I just close the browser? No, you killed you killed the broadcast. I didn't get to play no ads. <laughs> oh fuck! I'm sorry. All right. All right. Well, I'll make sure not to do that this time. Hey, I'm a little yeah. fucking. I smoke, a lot of, I smoke a lot of weed. What can I say? All right. Everybody, everybody, thank you so much. Yeah, but you smoke so much weed, it doesn't even have an effect on you. So you don't, you don't get you don't get that excuse. Matt, my brother, man, always great seeing you. Pops, you too, man. Good seeing you, man. Everybody in the chat, thank you so much for hanging out. We really do appreciate you. Smash that like button to subscribe and ring ding dong to the bell. And uh, Pops is going to take us away. And uh, until then, until next week. Peace, love, and metal!
Fairview's coffee has mysteriously gone missing. Mayhem ensues when strange, coffee-craving zombies plague the city. Detective Mickey Potatoes, an overworked public servant, uncovers why ordinary citizens are losing their minds and how to stop the coffee apocalypse. But it involves the Mafia. And when you're dealing with Mafia crime families, nothing is ever easy. The Mafia controls everything in the city, including the police, including him. If he breaks the Mafia, they will break him. So, the city is without coffee. The city is burning before his very eyes, but he's powerless. Detective Potatoes has the power to stop the coffee apocalypse, but if he does, he could lose everything. First world, come in and take a seat. Pay us no attention, it's all conspiracy. We have satire and parody, some funny, some perverse. If none of it's offensive to you, you'd be the first. Anyway, you come No, that's not it. Is it this? What the heck is Path of the Pale Rider, man? There's no way this is right. How about this? They have no idea. We can rob a bank. Oh, it's this.
The doctor is in, baby. This is Doc Blaylock, and you're watching the Madness Comic Network. Comic Books for Kids provides comic books to kids in hospitals and cancer centers across the U.S. It's a place where we can all work together to make sure every child has a comic book. 100% of all proceeds go towards the kids. It's about making a difference, and while they're in the hospital, allowing them to fly like a superhero, battle dragons, or rescue teddy bears. We are in every state in the country and now support over 160 hospitals. Every month, we add more. Visit cb4k.org.